And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two of my good brothers here in the temple. On one corner we have the man who is currently being possessed by Sun Gurasu, because it is Spooky Ween. Yeah. <laughs> good brother Shades. And on the blue corner, we have the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, Good Brother Xanatrix. It is, Oct it is October 3rd. No, we are not doing any spooky-themed episode of Geek Watch. Um, because, because, ever, because I do not fall, I do not, um, I do not trend jump. If I did, I'd probably have a TikTok account. <laughs> and... I'm so I'm so I'm sorry, but the but the only thing TikTok is good is good for is is watching uh, is watching Juju Smith Schuster embarrass himself and then and then acting surprised when he gets wrecked for dancing on people's logos. Seriously, you don't do that. <laughs> not unless you, not unless you really want to get people pissed off. But this week. Is something is is could is something that is going to be uh, going to be a midway point between Toku and tabletop as some as somebody who's who's dipped into both, and it's for it's for that reason that um there are going to be some interesting perspectives coming about th throughout the, throughout tonight, since my for the my I'll get into we'll get into this in a bit but. My journey with RVT began with the combination of the two, and speaking from experience, trying to combine those t trying to combine those two things is not as easy as a lot of people would like to think. For that reason, this w the th the topic for this week is deceptively complicated, adapting Tokusats to tabletop, and. I think I think I know I know I had I know I had this laid out differently in the outline for you guys, but I want to de I want to delve into my or into my origin when it comes to this when it comes to this whole thing. We won't go into the whole how how we all got, how we all got into Togusats because that's not the point. Um, uh -huh. And obviously, all three all three of us are Toku fans in one, in one form or another. But Indeed. um. For the longest time, I was I was mostly a so, I was mostly a solo act, and then one someone who had di who had dipped into dipped into RVT dur dur as as just just um putting up my regular just putting up my regular reviews on, on the site when the when the um when the when the community setup was st was still around, and I and it wasn't the only place I did that also with. Um, Rise of the Critics and a few and a few other places. I think I had I think I had like one or two posts on the old that guy with the glasses forums as well. Um, of course, um, cover co the fact that the fact that I'm covering not only tabletop but outside but outside the big two tabletop always hamstrung me, which I knew was going to happen from day one. But then one day. Um, Long at long after um, long after all the stuff that happened with Reviewtopia and all the stuff that would happen with our with the early days of R V of the R V T rebrand, which is a story for which is a story I have no interest in covering because that's because that's been treaded to death. <laughs> um, I end up I end up getting a call. I end up getting a um message on Skype from. From the from the from the man from Biohybrid, who at the time was the social media manager for RVT. Um, apparently apparently he had he had either know, he had either known about me from from Reputation or or um or spoken with me briefly on the um on the old on the old forums, and and asked if I was open to GMing. Um. He gave he gave me t he gave me two options. One of them and both and I will say in hindsight, both of the options. If I if I had known that I could have I could have picked a game myself, I would not have chose either of these options. 
One of them was a Sentai character class for D&D 3.5. The other was a game called was a game called Rider the Transformation, which was this hodgepodge of elements between uh, it used it used the storyteller system of of mostly D10s, but tried to integrate aspects of the D20 system, which there were mo there were multiple times where I was complaining about some about some of the things that that book did not take into account. It was very clearly um, un far from far from finished. I think the big burr up my ass at the time was the was the fact that there was no rule for utility forms. <laughs> yeah, we had fun figuring that out when I decided I wanted to have utility forms. I knew I knew I was going I knew I was going to have to do utility forms in some form because because traditions. And also, be also because your your character was the only one who really who really had the wiggle room to do it. But and I, and I do I do get I will give myself credit for finding a way out of it. But the the it ended up being ridiculously overpowered. But at that at that point, I was just so I was just so done with. All of all of the headaches that I was ha I was having to deal with managing the system that I didn't care, especially given how early on um, it want it wanted to do hit points, but at the same time it wanted to do the whole roll roll to um, roll to hit and then roll and then roll to see if your damage actually hits um, thing from the storyteller system. The thing is, storyteller can kind of get away with the storyteller system can get away with that because ultimately you only have seven hit points in that system with escalating penalties. So avoid so avoiding com so avo so you're having multiple chances to avoid damage. But um Ryder wasn't really doing that. So there'd be cases where somebody would roll a sh or somebody get would get a shitload of hits and succeed in hitting and only do chip damage at best. Yeah. Especially early on, good lord. Uh, although, although when we're talking about early on, I I would be remiss if I didn't bring up one thing that I have refused to let go for the past five years. <laughs> so don't throw the damn shield. <laughs> so at, when we did when we did this, um, shades, Maddie, and Mike Shell were pl were um were the play were the player characters. That were in, at the table, um, and what and um as I usually do, I I um I spoke with e I spoke with each one of I spoke with each one of them directly to to kind of help coax an idea out because I think I think originally you had I think originally you had you had wanted to do the, that kind of home that kind of homemade tech design that that you see with all the wires and stuff in um a lot of the gadgetry for Common Rider Double. But that, but that was that was all you had at the time. Yeah, and we ended up working that into into the creation of Common Rider Virtue. What what with doing what with doing the whole five element thing, and oddly enough, taking notes from Agito, which is always going to be funny to me since Agito is is um put me to sleep. There's a lot of good ideas in Agito, but it's just really poorly paced. But proof, proof once again that uh, even the best stories can be hampered by them by their own pacing. Mm -hmm. But um, I asked every, because of the fact that I want that I want to I always want to encourage um, crazy crazy I, crazy ideas and dumb shit and and the like when it comes to weaponry. I didn't want to do just the standard kind kind of kind of weapons like. We're dealing. We're dealing with a medium where we don't have to. Where we don't have to follow the traditions of the source material, as religiously as as some people insist on doing. <coughs> Hyperforce. <coughs> but I en I ended up. So I ended up asking all all three all three to give to give me to give me ideas, and I think I think I I think at the time I had pitched to you the the idea of the. Of the of the um of the sword and rope dart setup. Yeah, 
you you came up with most of the weapon ideas, I think. Um, I I had pitched I had pitched that one since I think you mentioned wanting to wanting to do a sword. I I said we we need to we need to make this a little more crazy. So a rope dart that could attach to the pommel of the sword uh, that could attach to the pommel of the sword I fi I figure is sufficiently crazy. Especially since your finish wasn't a rider kick, it was a rider knee. <laughs> uh, the sole reason I one pitched, of these days. The sole reason I pitched a rider knee hadn't been done before. One of these days, though, monk, you know we're gonna have a rider suplex. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, about that. We already got. Um, Vice would like to have a word with you. No, no, I mean officially. Vice Vice makes stuff up on the spot, and he also technically didn't use the suplex as the finisher. Semantics. But I'm also technically correct, which is the best type of correct. Mm. <laughs> Monk, you can always bring up what Maddie's character was about. Oh, yeah. Um... He, he, ver Maddie, very much want that Maddie's character very much wanted to it wanted to integrate a lot more, um, a lot more lucha libre in it. Which, unfortunately, that meant using grappling rules. And I've yet to I've yet to find a game that a that had gra that had rules for grappling that I actually like. Which I think I think that's a topic for another day of how to make grappling rules not suck. Yeah, grappling rules in most tabletops are not the best. And I'm, uh, and I will note that the re that the wrestling games that I covered a f that I covered a few years ago that's the exception because well grappling is kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> but in but in gen but in general it al it always it always felt it always felt kind of awkward. I will admit um D and D third edition is probably one of the w one of the worst cases of grappling. <laughs> 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 Uh, you know, where, you know where the rules for grappling are a whole column long. <laughs> but yeah, um, Matt. But Maddie's Maddie's approach was um was a was a couple of um what I what I guess could be described as the unholy combination between a between a mare's leg and a um sawed off double barrel and. The 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 approach that the approach and his particular finish was was the fact that his legs had specific notches where he where he could um where he could attach where he could attach though attach those um that shotgun he initially started with one but got but got two as as part of his upgrade his his rider kick was basically a super kick that de that um fi that fired both barrels as soon as he hit. It's because. it's just squall with extra steps. <laughs> oh. And then we get to Mike Shell. Now, I want to I want to point something I want to point something out. Mike Shell was supposed to, was supposed to have was supposed to have time space manipulation as his particular gimmick. Um I will I will note that in the very ugly sketch for for his henshin device, it was it was heavily inspired by the um, by the clock from Chrono Crusade, but he, but he pre he presented me with the with a um with this um gun shield concept that was fr that was from some iteration of Transformers. I can't remember I can't remember the specifics, and I don't have the image anymore. But he ended up go he ended up going with a gun shield, a large shield with a gu with a with a gun in with a gun in the front. So, so you effect you effectively can can pu can put the shield down and have mo and essentially have mobile cover. However, in episode two, during which during the during the climactic fight, instead of instead of using instead of using the sh instead of using the shield for his very defensive oriented build as 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 it was set up, 
He instead decides to throw the shield Captain America style, then use one of his abilities to call the shield back to him and do that for three turns straight. <laughs> when it has a gun built into it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I have never let him go I have never let him live that down since. Also, a uh, little bit of a side tangent. Uh I actually dug into my archives. Guess what I still have? A picture of the gun shield? No. Sound clips. Nirvana. <laughs> oh yeah, that. Um <laughs> Yeah, you you ended up trying you ended up trying to create to to create sound effects for each for each henshin, and this was back during the time when henshins didn't have their own micro song to them. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I even still have my finisher my finisher sound effect. Bye, Dragon Wrath. Since obviously you went with you went with the whole dragon motif. No, um, in hind, um, and. Because of the fact that I didn't want to go with the st with the element setup at a la Kuga, um, we ended up going with we ended up going with the um, f with the five Chinese elements instead. Um, with the with the mid season upgrade being Asura, which was supposed to be a which was supposed to be a living Joker card, and Nirvana was supposed to be the motif of all all the previous abilities in, in one go, which. Is largely because I was following tr tradition in that regard. Um, but w but I I had said I had said when we did the Q and A at the end of it that while while I enjoy while I enjoyed the twenty sessions that we did of the thing, um, I had a lot of problems with 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 how I hand with how I handled it and how um how how the how the how the rule, how the rule set kept fighting me throughout. Um, yeah, you had to house rule the shit out of that game, especially especially since the game very the game very much um what very much was carrying the assumption that people's powers would come from different elements, and it wasn't until years later I found out that one of the inspirations was a uh, magical girl game called Princess the Hopeful, which. In that regard, go, going with an going with an elemental basis for for a magical girl series, okay, that makes sense. But when you try and apply the, when you try and apply that kind of el, that kind of elemental setup to to common rider, and then tr and then try and apply this weird archetype system of uh, between ma between magic tech and and um what and wild riders, um. It didn't. Qu it didn't quite. It doesn't quite work. And even even some of the um, even some of the spreads when it came to elemental powers, felt very skewed. For instance, your in un unlike a lot of cases, your fire dragon form was not a me was not a melee centric one. It was it it was um it was essentially heavy. It was essentially the heavy arms tactic. Yeah. <laughs> stand stand pretty and go Daka. <laughs> Though my finisher was a giant freaking flame I think it was a giant flame cannon, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And it was it was basically it was basically a mic it was basically a a fl a um a fireball rifle. You could either you could either do you could either do it in rifle form or sh or sh or shotgun or shotgun form. The the whole thing is you it was supposed to be fire dragon f fire dragon form was supposed to be the king of um mi of mid of mid range and long range combat by the way fire! but <laughs> a lot of the abilities were v there were far less abilities for ranged combat than there were for melee or unarmed combat in that system the and th and that ended up that ended up being a being a problem, especially especially when it wants to have the combo system in at, for how finishers work, not too far removed from the combo system that charm that charms have in Exalted. 
Well, it doesn't help that this system, if I remember correctly, was still in be- it was and probably if it's even still around, is still in beta. Um, like it never got, it was not finished. I have not, I have not seen or I check, I did some double checking a week ago to see if there were any actual updates. It's the exact same as it was when we when we tested the thing five years ago. I think he decided, I think he dead ended himself, and I think probably because he ended up um, he ended up running into running into a wall because of the setup that he was using. I I want to I want to make clear I do th- I do think that ad- that adapting um, common rider into tabletop can be done, but you ha- but it has to be done um, carefully and that was that was something that I think I learned the hard way and when I would br- when I would bring up how how to do it to um, places like the old Atomic Think Tank and the and the general RPG um, subreddit. I would always get this. I would always get the same. I would always get one of two responses. One, what is tokusatsu, which is understandable, and two, why not just use a why not just use a supers game like Hero or um, or Mutants and Masterminds, and that's where that's where we get to the that's where we get to the first thing I want I want to get into. <sighs> yes, Char- characters char- characters characters. The kind of characters that you see in Kamen Rider, Super Sentai, Ultraman, and Garo, on some level are, can be classified as superheroes. In fact, the, in fact, the block for for the big t- for the big two in Tokus in Tokusatsu when it comes to this is called superhero time. Superhero time. Yeah. But I don't think I'm alone in the fact that you can't you can't you can't ta- you can't take a game that is ostensibly designed for. That's essentially designed with um, comic book superheroes in mind, and and just tra- and just transplant that into um, into to- into transforming hero Tokusatsu. You you can't do it for a, a few reasons, uh, not the least of which being that the the ethos of of the particular media in question is. Uh, only similar at the surface level. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, there are both both superhero comics and, and tokusatsu are about uh, people saving the world from a threat using some sort of superpower, whether that's technologically based, magically based, or otherwise. But the the means by which they express and explore those same general themes is vastly different. Mm-hmm. Now, this will, when it, even when it came to, even when it comes to the whole the div, div, dividing but dividing between but between say te, between say tech magic and um and beasts, you end up you you can't e- you can't even go that far because while there are while there are certain uh, while there are certain superheroes in the big two and in the indies where you can look at them and say that is that is a te- that is that is very much a tech ba- a tech based hero that is very that is very Iron much a magic Man. based one Iron Man is very clearly a tech based hero Zatanna is very clearly a magic based heroine um when you look at when you look at a lot of a lot of the entries in um just just using common just using say the first ten the first ten Heisei writers as an example. You have far more <laughs> you have far more of those entries that very much straddle the line between magic and magic tech and bio. Um, not not to mention the fact that uh it, uh, that I think the the reason that they straddle so many lines is due to the tradition having come all the way from the original common writer of in some way shape or form the writers get their powers from the things they are fighting yes i'd i'd say this go i'd say this goes all the way back to um cyborg 009 actually where they used their cyborg powers to fight against the evil organization that made them cyborgs mm mm-hmm. mhm which of course also happened in the original common writer but it figures since Ishinomori wrote both yeah um 
Now, granted, the real Kamen Rider is, has, more, it, has more ties to Skull Man, but that's um, that's a, that's a whole other can of worms in and of itself. Question here. But consi consider 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 Kuga. I get so, Kuga is Kuga is very much on is very much on the biological en end of things, and yet. The stuff, the stuff that the stuff that the Grongi and the and Kuga himself can do border on magical. Um, with with Agito, we have the literal God. We have we have God in the de we have God in the devil playing playing long playing long game with humanity. Yep. <laughs> with um, with with Ryuki, we I guess I guess you could call it I guess you could call it Magitech. Um, mm, but Ryuki has different problems. <clears throat> um, Fize is very is very clearly is very clearly tech based. Blade. Yeah, that's very tech. Um, Bl Blade Blade is Blade is one of those that straddles the line. Um, Deno, I'd say all, I'd say I'd I'd say is tech ish. Central. Magitech. Yeah, it's, it's outright. Ma it's outright yeah. Magitech. Mm -hmm. You've got the t the tech part of the Deno liner and all the on all of that stuff, but the Imagine are fucking magic. Let us not. <laughs> there's there's no getting past that the Imagine are goddamn magic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when it com when it comes to when it comes to a lot when it comes to a lot of a lot of them a lot of them straddle the line, and I'd say I'd say this is just. Par for the course for for something that was kind of hinted at when 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 I did the review of Anime Five E a few months back, where if you if you look at if you look at a lot of a lot of instances of fa of fantasy works in anime, it isn't it isn't the it isn't the straight genre fantasy. There's always there's always some sort of mixing going about. I'd say the I'd say I can only think of two I can only think of really one really one one um. One fantasy anime series that was that was as straight up fantasy as it can get. Actually, no, no, I take that back. I can think of two, and even then, I'm <laughs> even then I might be pushing it. Um, Record of Lodos War, and and its sub and its subsequent remake, and of course Legend of Crystania in the process. Um, Slayers. Once again, once again, I'm kind of pushing things. You're pushing it there, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. about to go. Mm. And um, orphan. One, and once again, I'm once again I'm pushing. All, it. all three of these, even Lodos War, you're you're, you're pushing something on some border with each one. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the, that's the thi that's that's the thing. And of course, once you go once you go beyond once you go beyond that, you're 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 either you're either mixing but you're either mixing fa fantasy elements with um with di with different fairy tales you're mixing it with SF I Samurai 7 or <laughs> you're um you're mi you're mixing it w you're mixing it with uh, with other gen with other genres like say um like say Trinity Blood or Romeo X Juliet or L or Last Exile all, all or the... if you do get a fully fantasy based thing like it's like on the surface everything looks fantasy it then also usually turns out to be uh VR MMO There's cer there's Lo certainly that Log Horizon I love you dearly but the fact that they could <laughs> manipulate the game mechanics to give themselves an unconquerable advantage early on it's like, mmm, game theory, so good. Um, <laughs> and you've got obviously, obviously you've obviously you've got the many many victims of Truck Coon, um, <laughs> and oh. I'd say I'd say <laughs> I'd say the la I'd say the last a the last anime that that, I'd, that I saw that could come as close as you can possibly get to be to being that to being strictly traditional fantasy, as a lot of people understand it, is Goblin Slayer. And even then, I'm not 100% putting that down for this. Actually, no, you can put it down for this, and there's a reason for that, Monk. Because because it's based on a D because it's based on the writer's D and D campaign. Yes, and as you've always pointed out about D and D, it is the Tolkien melting pot. Mel melting pot. Mm -hmm. uh, tongue, please work. Um, so, 
there you go, everybody. You want true high fantasy? Go watch Goblin Slayer and become scarred for the rest of your lives like everybody else. <laughs> Bitch, please. I know, we've I... seen worse. We've been to 4chan, we know. Like, you've seen Cat Soup. You got no room to talk about, about Goblin Slayer scarring anybody. <laughs> I'm talking to the normies who might watch you. And 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 besides, if I if I really want to have somebody scarred for, scarred for life, I'd have I've had them I'd have them watch any anything by Yuasa. <laughs> if I well, wanted to scar people for life through sheer uh, shock factor, I'd make them go watch Legend of the Overfiend. Oh God, too easy. Too easy, but still effective. If the tool works, it's not a bad tool, Monk. Look, all, all I'm saying is it was a comedy gold mine. Lo looking, <laughs> looking at the, uh, t looking at, looking at people um, tweeting about tsunami during that April Fool's incident. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> um, but I don't, and I will, I will, say, I will say not, e not every, um, you are not every you also work is 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 a drug trip. I mean. Don't mess with Azaken is is certainly not, um, and Tatami Galaxy was sane er largely because of the fact that you also wasn't writing. <laughs> seems to be a seems to be a pattern. He the only way the only way to make him not do the heavy drugs is to ha is to have him only direct and not write. <laughs> but getting back getting back on the rails, the 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 fact of the matter is is that. There are there are very clearly defined lines in in um co in comics, and you don't have you don't have a whole lot of high you don't have a whole lot of hybrids, and if you I mean uh, as an, as an example, um even in DC's tie-ins to their video games and such, mm -hmm. there are there are three broad but very distinct categorizations to, to heroes, that being heroes with a technological basis. Heroes with a magical basis and metahuman heroes, um, and their flagship fla flagship examples of those are tech is Batman, magic for some reason is Wonder Woman, and uh, metahuman is Superman. Mm -hmm. And you can very clearly see the difference in the source of their power and how their power is expressed with each one of those characters. Um, I think through our examples of, of just some of the common writers we covered in, in early Heisei, and oh god, if we go into Neo Heisei, <laughs> um, you yeah. see that, that that particular border just doesn't exist. And that not even close. <laughs> that is that is, that, is so, that brings me to one of to one of the big issues is is um is the amount of is the amount of genres that one that one has to that one has to um, cover. Um, because, because, now what, now, um, I want, I want to make clear, the reason I'm focusing on Kamen Rider with this is because that's the, that's the, e that's the easy step. If we want to go, if we want to go into the kind of, the kind of genres that Super Sentai has covered since the 70s. Stop. <laughs> no, let's not and say we did because they've fucking done everything at least twice. No, no, they've <laughs> done dinosaurs fucking four times now is it or just three i said at no, least four. twice it's four times Rear soldier counts as dinosaurs it's four fucking times they've done dinosaurs i said at least twice and even with the even with each of those entries it's dinosaurs and i mean <laughs> yes i <laughs> yes i mean no. <laughs> it's dinosaurs and something else even well, with g ranger Let's see. Jew Ranger, dinosaurs and annoying kids. D well, dinosaurs. <laughs> well, I would have said dinosaurs and, fa and like uh, story storybook fantasy. Yeah, I would have said. Yeah, we can go. We can go with that. But there was. Always, I would have seemed to be. I would have said dinosaurs and immor and immortal annoying people. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. Abba Ranger, Di dinosaurs and dinosaurs and um, hot bloodedness. <laughs> Dinosaurs and insanity. Abate mode is not hot bloodedness anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, with, with dinosaurs and insanity, but we're not talking about a barre killer. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, 
probably my favorite from some more modern times. Uh, Vamola. Dino Kill dinosaurs and, dinosaurs yep. and Latin America. <laughs> no, dinosaurs, Latin America, and batteries. You can't forget the tech aspect, because the Judenti are a thing. Mm -hmm. And oh. then, of course, with the uh, latest disappointment, uh, Reef Soldier, <laughs> dinosaurs, and European knights, or at least they tried to be. Yeah, and then Anal showed up. <laughs> Don't worry, I hate I hate him too. Um, and, and then anal shut up. That's the that's what we call I, Canalo. No, anal. No, 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 no. You see, here's the thing. You can't really call him that. He doesn't get any, whether it's anal or vaginal or oral. <laughs> Which um, Alright, you know what? I, I was worried you were gonna try to do something bad, but no, you know what? I'm with him on that one. He <laughs> doesn't get any. You can't call him anal. He doesn't even get pegged. Even if he got pegged, I could call him anal. Instead, I'm just going to call him what, you know, is a, is one of the most traditional terms in Japan for his kind. Dote-kun. <laughs> and, you know, er early on, I had, call I had called him a poor man's Moroku, but I can't, I can't even go that far because Moroku... Moroku had charm. One, Moroku had charm, and two, Moroku actually, get Moroku actually got some. Yashahime has confirmed that for us. Yeah, he finally got laid. And he also no longer has a hole in his hand. Yeah, but the but the 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 fact of the matter is is that is that have, having to having to cover all the all those different all those different genres and with covering different genres comes different rules. Especially, especially when it comes to, especially when it came to the different, the different rules for for how the he for how the heroes' abilities operate, and ha and how the monsters operate. The different. Oh, and then, it, oh, and and I was also going to say that, um, as you pointed out with the limitations of Riot or the transformation, both as, as you pointed out here and outside of the show. The rules have only gotten more complex as common writer has gone on. I'd would say for for a good for a good amount of the Showa era, the the rules were relatively simple. It was just the designs that got what the fuck. Um, well, that and we had the, that and the unfortunate meme of everything is Golgum's fault, and then everything was <laughs> Crisis's fault. But. From but the the idea of the idea of following the rules is something that um, at least in Common Rider really and really re really displayed itself with um, Kuga because the Gageru had very strict rules that the that the Grongi had to follow. And okay. And gr granted, granted, in some in some cases, the exploration of the Gregongi, of the uh, Grongi ended up turning um, turning Kuga into um, Japanese twenty four. <laughs> but there, but there is the, there is the fact that there that 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 sort of those sort of rules have been, have been in play, even if the rule is just going is just going into the method that they u that the villains use for their ultimate goal. Um, whether whether that whether that be whether that be killing people to try and make to try and make new orphanox because there's a like like a like a slim they a slim chance that that someone killed by an or, by an orphanox will become one themselves or uh or even with the more lighthearted series of forze the um whole inspiring their <coughs> Their negative feelings to power a uh, to power a zodiac and try and make it evolve, mm -hmm. or a constellation and try to make it evolve into a zodiac. Pardon me. Yeah, so, yeah. And having having to having to having to put having to put that into any to any sort of any sort of system. And one could one could argue, oh, the G, the GM could the GM could hand wave that. There still need. I don't like I don't like the attitude of. Um, 
of the, of give of putting all putting all of that on the GM. Large. I actually. Go um. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I I was gonna say that I actually think that um, using Revice and semi spoilers. Um, I guess I'm not gonna give the the exact details, but the Revice enemy upgrade uh, path seems fairly straightforward. Uh, since you've since you've finished episode four, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Going from a, a, de a dead man to a stronger version of a dead man. Yeah, and I w I don't want I don't want to I don't want to cover revice in the, in this context yet because I still don't know all of the all the rules with how that with how that particular game is played. Well, I mean, and we're only five episodes in as of today, uh, so. That's natural. Mm -hmm. um, then, uh, especially even even with the additional complexities of certain other facets of Heisei, um, and even into Rewa, uh, the the rules as to how the enemies advance their cause are still rather rigid, which is interesting. Yeah, and it's it is it is one of those things that you can, that can be utilized to to build a kind of um, build a kind of foundation. But the, but going going past that, there is one there is one other issue that um, this isn't as much of an issue in in a team based entry like say Super Sentai or some incarnations of um, some incarnations of Metal Hero. This applies. Some incarnations it doesn't apply. But the but the whole the whole is, the whole issue of a lot of use of a lot of the source material consists of solo heroes and duet kind duet play is not a common occurrence well again with the exception of revice but that's that's an entirely different story as well <laughs> what, I, what i mean by duet play is one player and one gm mhm mm that is, that's it. Certainly happens, and there's a handful of games that are designed for it, but they are ex they are the niche of niche of niche, um, in the grand scheme you, of things. You know, and that that leads, uh, like you said, in comparison to some parts of Metal Hero and all of Super Sentai. Mm -hmm. Um. I think I think I've probably stated this particular difference to to people who say, "Well, there's no real difference." Before Super Sentai is all about the gestalt; it's about the sum of the parts being, gr uh, the, or the whole being greater than the sum of its parts, and the the team elevating each other. Whereas Common Rider, even if you have multiple writers, and there are some series that did multiple writers really well. Guy, I'm looking at you. You did fantastically with multiple writers. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, the the writers are in effect one man armies that temporarily or even permanently, such as in the case of Wizard and Beast, work together. And it, it, it the it sounds similar. People working together is going to be so superficially similar as to be meaningless in the end. Mm -hmm. But a common writer can act by themselves in any situation and only be at slightly more of a disadvantage than if they were having other common writers help them, except in the case of overwhelming plot force. Evolto, you are a magnificent bastard and I love you. <laughs> uh, but the, and and so that, that was when they needed multiple writers working. Did did you ever notice that the that the end of build started feeling like a Sentai almost? <laughs> I think we almost. Joke about that a couple times. Oh, that and I remember I remember so, I remember someone making the joke of okay, tell explain to me how Evolto isn't a de isn't cell. <laughs> um, e easy. He was successful. <laughs> Yeah, but um, when it comes to when it comes when it comes to when it comes to that whole group thing, there is um, now obviously even even with solo even with solo heroes, there's always been a 
um support a supporting ca- a supporting cast that that, mm-hmm. has, that has helped that has helped them in w- in one form or another um i don't a um a form a formula which i which i think cw superheroes have ki- have kind of abused but i'm not get but i don't want to get into that here yeah this isn't about smallville oh um, i wasn't even going to bring up smallville i was going to bring up the flash no no i don't need flashbacks thank you is that a pun it is now <laughs> but the, but um whatever brings you to the flashpoint monk god damn it <laughs> don't get penisy <laughs> but there but there is there is the there is the big problem that if um if i'm if i'm setting up a common writer themed campaign with a bunch of players um, everybody's gonna want to be common writer in one for, in one form or another. So it's the it's the whole everybody wants to be the Doctor conundrum from any of the Doctor Who tabletops. Yeah, in, fa- in fact, I I think I distinctly said I would not I would not run a do- a Doctor Who tabletop game with, with the usual crew when um when people when people were giving suggestions and there was one person who I had who I had to. One person in the RVT community who I had to smack who I had to smack around because he didn't he didn't get what I was asking. Because you were yeah, you were designing that. a unit, weren't you? Um, no. What what happened What happened was after after we finished up Rider, I pu- I put it forth to the community to um, pitch John gen- pitch genre ideas on on the on what on what we do for, on what we do for the future because we weren't doing a season two of um, Rider. Um, now we would need to stress, we wanted genre ideas. Yes, one guy kept get, apparently apparently thought that um thought that thought that Digimon and Doctor Who were genres. So <sighs> he so he got he got Dave so hard everybody else could feel it by, by proxy. This is. <clears throat> Can somebody yeah, no, my, can, my community can somebody just stop the planet and let me off? I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> I just I, I just want to step be off on now. This planet anymore? Yeah, but if you're off if you're off the planet, you lose all your opportunities to torment me. Oh, I still think that if I'm only off the planet and still within good light range, I can torment you with an eight and a half minute delay, <laughs> which might torment you further because time zones. Fuck off. <laughs> but the but there's but give but um I now I will I will admit if you if you want a um if you want another example of of this every of this everybody wants to be the um doctor kind of thing um I'm not sure if you, if either of you have any experience with Star Wars Galaxies but um when Ralph oh Coster, yeah, I know when, exactly yeah. where this is going. When Ralph Coster yep. was run, was running it, he was adamantly against including Jedi in the game. And his and some people would say, well, wh- why would he be against that? Je- Jedi are, Jedi are, are an iconic archetype of Star Wars. His reasoning was in his in his words, which I'm paraphrasing, Jedi are an alpha class, and if it's in there, everybody's going to want to try and be a Jedi. Insta- and it's going to screw over the um, the eco- the economy of the economy of the sandbox, where everybody's taking on different ro- different roles. Because Star Wars Galaxies was an old school sandbox kind of thing, where being being a merchant, being a dancer was just was just as vital as a role as go- as going out and going out and fight and f- and fighting trash mobs. For for another example, where of an old schoolish type MMO where every role counts. Look no further than Eve Online. Yeah, <clears throat> like this is why they made the Jedi like when they did have to put Jedi in the game, they made it such a gargantuan, monumental uh, uh, task to do that it was an accomplishment in of itself just to get the opportunity to become a Jedi. You also had to be lucky enough in character creation to be force sensitive in the first place. Yeah, because that was randomized. That was dumb. It was it was dumb. It was dumb, but keep in mind the sole reason he did it was a case of if I'm if I 
the only reason he the only reason that it, that it was put in is because um, SOE demanded him to. So he's like, if I'm if I have to do this, I'm gonna make it as difficult as possible to try and mitigate the damage. I'm sure there were people who uh, rerolled characters consistently and constantly to get force sensitives. Oh yeah, and the, oh they probably did. Oh but... they did, <laughs> and because of the fact that it that it involved hunting um hunting holoc hunting um holocrons, it didn't take long before the community had mapped out where where they were. Mm -hmm. So, but oh. then. But then, one update completely destroyed the game. I'm guessing you're talking about NGE. Yep. For those who have not heard the story, one day I guess I guess uh, our our fav our developer friend there just got finally got shut out completely because in one of the NGEs, they added they changed completely redesigned the the system. So that you, with a new care, with a new class picking system, where being a Jedi was literally as easy as pushing a button. Yep. And that destroyed the character economy balance that he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Exactly as the guy predicted. And and so that's that's the issue of everybody wants to be a writer, except this is a practical example of that, just yeah. to pull us back onto rails. Yeah, and when it comes to. This it's for it's for this it's for this re that's one of the main reasons why um why try why trying to why trying to do trying to do a so in you have the you have the issue you have two issues um on one hand a a single writer is is meant to is meant to be is meant to be a kind of one meant to be a kind of army unto themselves then you have the issue of how how do you maintain tension if you have multiple one man armies. And a, fur a further issue that you end up having is when you look at um, when you look at the way characters are built and are built and designed, it is very clear that each character, even if even if they're not doing a class based game, each character is going to be built with um, with advantages and disadvantages in some form or another. It is extremely hard to do a jack of all trades character. Unless you're min maxing and being a munchkin, but that's a different story. I'd say yeah. I mean, even with sorry, even with uh, even with my character and writer, you know, yeah, I was clearly the um, more OP character of the three of us, especially by the end. But <laughs> with with how that turned out, but I still there were things I couldn't do that you know I would have to rely on Maddie and Mike's characters to to, to kind of pick up the slack. Mm -hmm. And even. I will note that when it came to utility forms, I was I was trying to design them to be very good at one thing and um and and I'd say the the closest the closest thing to the jack of all trades archetype was um was Earth, which was meant to be the base form. Yeah. But all of course, uh, and Os like I said, Osora was meant to be was meant to be the was meant to be the wild card that would constantly change its tactics. Um, and Nirvana was supposed to be the system mastery approach. Um, obviously because of, because of the limitations of the system, I couldn't do, I couldn't go through that as, as I had intended, but that was what, that was what I was trying to go for. Um, now when it can this bring, this brings us to what, this brings us to another issue. That's go. That's going to. That's going to occur because of because these. This kind of thing has been pre has been prevalent. I'd say. Ever, I'd say ever since. Um, ever ever since this. Ever since the er, the early eighties, and that is forms, in what in one well form or another. Now, upgrade forms have have been have been no, have been nothing new. Um. Like I said, the early, the earliest example of that in Common Rider was um, Stronger's Charge Up form, um, mm -hmm. and there's been the lengthy tradition of of things of things like of things like Battleizers, or or sim or similar or similar um, team up team or solo upgrades in in um, Power Rangers and Super Sentai, and U Ultraman has I want Ultraman has dipped has dipped into both in one in one form or another. Um, I don't. I. 
I want to say the I want to say the first time I saw I saw a form switching in Ultraman was Tiga, but I'm pretty but I get the feeling that there was one before that. No, I think you're pretty spot on. I think Tiga is when they actually started getting into that kind of thing. Yeah, and they and they've um, they've kept they've kept it they've kept into it ever since. In just grant granted granted some of some of them have dipped into it more than those and um more and in the last few years there's been the whole, there's been the whole thing of oh oh you draw you draw on powers from from previous ultras <laughs> which um i think which i'm i'm getting a little bit sick of to be honest i'm probably yeah, not the only, only one. the most only the very like only the most the current season has finally decided to do something and even that it's base it's it's for the whole thing is based on a past ultra as it is so it doesn't quite work that way um are you referring to trigger or zet Trigger. Trigger is completely like it's completely based off Tiga. It's got so it's got a very similar uh, power set, but it's you know there there are differences, but it's not based on all past ultras like the others are. Yeah, whereas some, whereas something like Zet, a lot of a lot of the get a lot of the, its gimmicks and its forms were based on um, combinations of three ultras, and Geed was was based on combinations of two. Just just use a couple examples. Yeah, that's been going on since uh, Ginga. Mm -hmm. Now, with the, but the but the fact but when it comes to when it comes to those sort of forms, you could you could kind of consider you can kind of consider forms the equivalent of um of switching jobs in Final Fantasy, and the problem that ends up arising is that. Within one character, you have you have say f you have say five jobs or three or three jobs or in the case of O's you have yes jobs. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the case O's of was expanding on the on the form mixing that came from double though. That's kind of why. Yeah. Um, in double you had um, you had not you had. I w I'd say before bef I'd say. Um, eleven total. Um, gold extreme does not count. Yeah, and th well, of course, this is also before the upcoming uh, Futo Pai anime, which is going to uh, bring that up to uh, thirteen. Because because of the because of the other um, Fang forms. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he, and of course, of course, the um. Of course, there's been there's there's been there's been plenty of others that have ha that have had a myriad of different of different forms and and um and equipment ch and equipment changes. Um, some some of them get some of them get a little bit gen get a little bit Monty Hawley than others, but the fact of the matter is you ha you have extreme f extreme forms of multi classing when you when at the when at the same time you're trying you're and how how you how you accommodate that is going to be an issue because at its worst, if I were if I were to if I were to use say mutants and masterminds to do just Kuga, that would involve <laughs> me having like six character sh six character sheets at once. That is way too much of an ask for anybody. Yeah. And um. Is it possible that I could that I could simplify the the um the met the metals in uh, the metals in O's? I'd like to say that, but then there's the fact that the pure combos have their have their own additions. And their and their own and their own rule sets. The there is the whole thing that pure combos are a lot more powerful but a lot more draining. Um and that's not even get that's not even getting into the the ridiculousness of say all, of say all the character sheets I'd need for for the likes of decade or or um geo or oh, build God, fucking... remember build, build not... has sixty fucking full bottles mm -hmm. and each can be combined in a pair and there's also a best match for each that is better than just normal pairing. You probably got something like a hundred and some odd character sheets there. Yeah, minimum, minimum. 
and have and having to having to give advantages and disadvantages to eat to each of them would be would be very much an issue as well as as well as the fact that you don't want that it's very bad form to to do a to do Monty Hall mm -hmm. um where you're be for those for those unaware with the lexicon Monty Hall is when, is when a GM is a little too generous with handing out XP treasure or, or what have you um Coming. The other term commonly used is also a Midas G uh, GM. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, so for our purposes, you could also call it the Ghost Safe problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was bad. There is and a simple hurts. And you, you know it's true. Problem. Oh, I know. I know it's true. I know it's true. Um. But the but but the it is. Now, granted, depending on system, it would be possible to simplify that to an extent, but it is, but it is still it is still still a hurdle to get over, especially since with a lot of with a lot of with a lot of writers that have some form of form switching, that form switching is usually relegated to just the main writer. While secondary writers may have their own advantages and they may get their own upgrades, they're not going to have the same level of versatility. <laughs> Until Saber, that is. <laughs> Actually, you know, thinking about it now, I could I could name like one writer who would probably be pretty easy from the modern era. It still wouldn't be super easy, but compared to everybody else, it probably wouldn't be that hard. Drive. And here's how I explain this. When you get down to it, he only had five main forms. Because you had speed, wild, technique, formula, and triterot. Mm -hmm. So, at most, five character sheets. Now, some people are going to ask, well, what about all the tire cocons? Easy. Those are just bonuses. They Those... still stack on to the, base f to the base form that they're using. In some cases, they could just be additional and or different weapons. Pretty yeah. much. Especially... Um... Especially since the the whole the whole tire change thing is very is very clearly meant to be um, meant to be a meant to be a nod to the pit stop concept that you see that you see in um, mo that you see in motorsport, especially especially when it comes to especially when it comes to the three degrees of tires that um, that are that are used in say Formula One, mm -hmm. which um, there's a there's a lot more. There's a lot more planning that goes into cho that goes into choice of tire than one might think. Yeah, Formula One is a much more involved sport than most people consider. To them, it's just haha, fast car go. Brrr. No, it's... Yeah. like <laughs> yeah, from an outsider's perspective, that is all it is. But for when you're actually writing running it, there's a whole lot you don't know that most don't see. I um, I have I have played I have dipped into in one form or another every um. Every F every F one game that Codemasters has put out for the last um, four years, some of them be some of them very much better than others. Um, I am a little bit afraid of, with the fact that Codemasters ha was acquired by EA. So oh, it's dead. Bye bye. <laughs> um, <laughs> not just afraid. Just go ahead and uh, say bye bye. It's right, gone. write it off. It's write it off as lost at this point, Monk. So in, in yep, this yeah. case, if, in this case, if I need my, if I need my, if I need my, um, high, if I need my sim ish um, racing, the main, the main option that I have is a set of course of Competiciona. Um, or the Forza series that isn't Horizon. There's that. There's that too. But I. But variety is important. And. Oh well, then you then you want Gran Turismo, right? <laughs> I here is where I'd put my new Gran Turismo if I had one. GT Seven's <laughs> on its way. Uh huh. Yeah. You'll believe it when there's physical physical evidence. I know. Yeah, and I'll be, I'll believe it. I'll believe it right. I'll believe it right around the time that Half Life Episode Three comes out. Didn't you know? It's canceled. Alex is the new Half Life Three. I hate you. <laughs> but the the fact of the the fact of the matter is you that you have the 
take those all those issues that we mentioned when it came to utility and upgrade forms. And that is just one. And keep in mind, we said ev we said before, everybody wants to be the common writer. Which means that which means you have to deal with the possibility of multiple forms for multiple characters. And then you have the problem that comes with everybody wants to be the one man army. Gameplay exclusion. Oh, yeah. You're going to have an issue. It's now um one now one would one would think that because of all the pro, all the pitfalls that happened with Common Rider, the the argument could be made. Well, wouldn't wouldn't admit wouldn't um wouldn't Super Sentai be easier to utilize? Not exactly. And I know ev I know everybody's going to bring up Hyperforce. Let me get this out of the way right now. I have um. I have some significant problems with with Hyperforce that I've I've made clear for the longest time, and I've and um when I look back when I look back at the story that Hyperforce told and I look back at the story that Ryder told, I think I did a better job, <laughs> <laughs> which is absolutely hilarious to me because I was doing everything by myself. I didn't ha I didn't have so I didn't have some liaison from Saban. Um, who 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 could be who could be the fall guy or fall girl if I fucked up? I mean, let's be uh, honest here, though. You didn't have a liaison to Saban. That was to your advantage, not your disadvantage. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Being attached to Saban these days is a death knell. Now, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of with Dan on that one. <laughs> now we brought we brought up Hyperforce a little bit last week because of the fact that that was something else that was stealing. Um, that was stealing the the shows' thunder at the time. That that and that and Shattered Grid were a kind of one-two punch. That was what was what was in the forefront of conversation at at the time. Uh, mm. Now, the big the the big prob the big prop. You know how we meant. You know how I mentioned pacing when it came to Agito. The big problem that I had with Megaforce was similar but different. Um, you mean hyperforce? Yeah, with with hyperforce, the you have it was it was made very clear from the outset that this was going to be this was going to be a this was this was going to be a full season of twenty sessions. That was that was made. I know this was made clear from the outset because I saw I saw the whole press conferency thing that that they did for it, and they made clear this is going to be a twenty episode season. Because of the fact that you're on, you're only dealing with twenty episodes, you don't have much room to piss about. There were several sessions that very much felt like um, the equivalent of a filler episode of a show. And you can a twenty six episode anime can kind of get away with those one offs, um, but you can only really get away with that if if the majority of the if you're trying to if you're trying to go with um. With with single shot stories throughout your entire season, or you're just trying to go for complete for complete bonkers shit like say Space Dandy. Yeah. But if you're tr but if you're trying to but if you're trying to go for for the it's for the longest time, a lot a lot of a lot of this kind of material has been has been very serialized. That's there's been that level of expectation. And because because of that, you can't afford to waste time. And they ended up paying for that for those early episodes where they spent they spent more time making references to the past, instead instead of instead of moving forward with the story they were trying to tell, because you had, because you had a bunch of you had a bunch of stuff revealed in the la in the last few episodes that weren't that they weren't going to be able to get resolved. Include, including of including a very blatant um, sequel bag that I knew was never going to happen. Um, there was also there was also the there was also the fact that they, I know that they did that one video exp explaining explaining how the, how their rules worked, but to be honest, that was the equivalent of saying of saying how to how to play D how to play D and D. In D and D, you roll you roll a twenty sided die and compare it to a target. Add 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 modifiers as listed on your character sh as listed on your character sheet by your GM, and compare and compare that to a target number. If it goes over the number, you you pass. Is that technically correct? 
This is a case where technically correct is not the best kind of correct, because while it is correct that that's how you play, just going with explaining that base mechanic tells me just enough to piss me off. <laughs> yeah, that's at that point, it's not that the technical correctness, technical correctness is not still the best type of correctness. It's that the specificity is the wrong type of specificity. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm technically correct, still making me the best kind of correct. Yeah. <laughs> but with there are um there there are a few, there are a few there are a few issues that you have that you have to deal with when it com when it comes to um when it comes to when it comes to doing a doing a super sentai approach one because of the emphasis on t on teamwork um you have to you have to make you have to make sure that e that every single character is balanced with each other that every every one of them has a advantage and disadvantage, and you can and covers a decent ish enough of, amount of ground. And that is that is something that is very much easier said than done, depending on how many moving parts are within the system you're using. And if you're in the end, in the end, I would say that the uh, that the problems of doing a rider based campaign, and the problems of doing a Sentai based campaign, are um, mirror images of each other. Very, with, very much uh, so. Yeah, especially since, as you said, with a Sentai-based campaign, everybody has to be. They have to have their own niche. Mm -hmm. Each each Sentai each Sentai member does have their own strength. They also have a weakness that, at some point, tends to be covered by the strengths of the others. Yes, uh, and so. I'm sure all of our tabletop buddies out there have heard of the term party cohesion. Mm -hmm. um, Sentai is essentially party cohesion hell. You have to somehow design a perfect party cohesion that doesn't overtip in any one direction. And when it comes to when it comes to when it, that, and that's not, that's and that there are two other massive elephants that have to be addressed when trying to when trying to <laughs> utilize um, Super Sentai or Power Rangers. Now, the genre one we've ar we've already co we've already covered. Um, I'd say I'd say I'd say another major one would be um, how, would be how to handle upgrades, especially especially if you end up taking the route that certain series have gone and get and give the upgrade to the red. Which, mm, red exclusive upgrades. Talk about a way to divide your player base. Oh yeah. Which red red exclusive is is something that I, is something that I am not that I am not necessarily a fan of. I've tolerated it at at best, but. No, but nevertheless, it is something. It is there is the there is the possibility that that some people may um may may wish to integrate it into into the setup that they're emulating. I don't I don't like I don't like it, but it is but it is something that is present. Now, the other and the other end of th the other end of the equation. Is uh, it, and this is the big, big, big elephant in the room. <laughs> mechs. Now, one one would think there's one there's plenty of mech games you can make that work. No, 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 no. Mechs are one thing. Combiner mechs is a whole other can of worms. <laughs> because Rem I want you. I mean, to go ahead. I was gonna say you could do as um as Zen Kaiger is doing. <laughs> Everybody is a mecha, and they combine to become become even bigger mechas. But they're all humanoid at some point. Mm, I don't. I I don't know. And that that feels like a bandage at best to this particular issue because the pro the problem is. You have essentially one mech who is who it, that is piloted by f by three to five or more people. 
and um, this is incidentally this is a problem that I also that I've also had when it came to uh, when it came to ship combat whenever I do whenever I do any um, game that had just one ship like I had this problem early on when I'd when I'd run Star Trek um, campaigns with um I, I mean with Star Trek that's a that's a much bigger issue because you have an entire crew of a of a starship to account for. But with uh, with Super Sentai, you only have the Sentai team piloting these mechs and the combiner. Um, <clears throat> I mean, this is going to be a bandage no matter how you how you shake it. Mm -hmm. But you could make um, make the whole system basically group checks. Um, that way, everybody is still involved. Yeah, what like I would everybody. say is have like you know have your red designate who will who will do certain checks for certain attacks. That that would be um, to be to be quite honest. Um, I think the approach the approach that I've seen with with certain rule sets like say Admiral of the High Seas, which was an which was a um a naval combat expansion for for um Pathfinder, is is that um. Is that is that the is that the com the commander doles out com doles out command points to to everyone else, which they, which they can which they can spend on certain actions. Um. I think, I think that that's that's the be that's the that would that would be the be the best way to ha to handle it. But it does open another problem of um of ro of roles on the on the particular ship or mecha in this case um that's i'd say i'd say one minor issue that you have to deal with is the whole scaling thing like are we gonna are we gonna bring in mega damage into this <laughs> <laughs> or honestly considering that both you know adding this and then the monster is also going to be powered up it would basically cancel each other out yeah i'd say um now, when it comes to, I'd say, um, I'd say one of the, I'd say one, there are two, there are two series that, I think, I think, um, are able to sidestep the genre problem to one to one degree, and that, and that, those are Ultraman and Garo. Ultraman, unless unless I'm mistaken, but I do believe that Ultraman has largely stayed largely stayed within. The realm of Gonzo science fiction. It's pretty much. It's never. Re it's never really gone. It's never really gone into. It's never really gone into fantasy. The, the whole. Um. At be at best, you could at best you could argue that the that the techno the technology of the ultras, is um is is in Clark's law. I mean the the closest the closest thing the closest thing to magic I can think of is um is alt is Ultraman needing a ho needing a host on Earth. And even then, you could probably make arguments for that, but it's yeah, your point stands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, everything about it is supposed to be technology based, even if it is so advanced that it appears magical, as Clark's Law points out. Mm -hmm. You know, but. Everything like every their transformation trinkets, I mean, like some of the pure mystical, like Tigas, the spark, like a lot of the spark lenses and things like that. A lot of those devices can look like magical devices, mm -hmm. but even then, there's always been this tinge of technological uh, usage in them. And as most series, and I'd say ninety percent of the series, it's clearly technological. Yeah, and this go this goes all the way back to the Patient Zero Ultra Q. Um, very, very much, very much trying, very much trying to be, be the, be the Japanese answer to, to the Twilight Zone. Which, de which definitely delved into a lot of, a lot of the kind of speculative science fiction that would have, that would have been commonplace in the, in the pages of Weird Tales back, back in the uh, 1920s. Um, it's for... Now, gr now, granted, the line between science fiction and weird fiction has always has always been kind of slim. But you look back at the Twilight Zone; it never it never went all it never went all that fantastical. 
It was either it yeah. was either a case of it's up for debate or it or you were dealing with speculative technologies. Oh. I can't I can't say the exact same for the night gallery. That was a little bit more psychological. But even but even then there was there wasn't a case of it's magic. I don't have to explain shit. <laughs> it's usually a case. I don't of, ever. Uh, go ahead. I was gonna say I don't even I I don't I don't think we ever saw that with the Twilight Zone. There was always there was always a, a what if or or a tag to pull on that like you said speculation was usually what happened rather than a it's magic I ain't got to explain shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And getting back to Ultraman, you could go even further if you wanted to uh, base something on the Netflix Ultraman, the CG anime version. Yeah, since all all of, all of those are essentially um, tech suits. Which, yeah. To be fair, I absolutely love the design of the of the ultra, of the Ultra suits, especially. Oh, um, they look amazing. I I recently came and some of the fan art that's that spawned from them has been great. I saw I saw one that was a um, Ultraman Z suit. Um. Although I'd would say I'd say my I'd say my favorite of the of the ones that I've seen is the one for Ultra Seven. The Mark Seven, yeah, that one's official too. The Mark the Mark Seven suit was really well done, and it was definitely a different. It was definitely a nice take. Now that I'm actually watching Ultra, the original Ultra Seven, looking back at how Dan Moriboshi is in the Netflix version. It's definitely a, a slight retelling of how he acted in there, because you know, very serious, very by the books. Mm -hmm. It's just taken to its logical extreme. Where Netflix, Netflix Dan is kind of a bit of an asshole about it. Yeah. Um, also, also, Toei, something, something like this, ultra, something like this Ultraman project could have been yours if you didn't be a dick. <laughs> Are you? Shades, are you are you familiar with the with the brief run of Hybrid Inspector? No. Hybrid, the same guy who did, the same guy who wrote what would who wrote and designed what would become the ultra the um, Netflix Ultraman. Um, created a fa created a fan comic that got quite that got quite a bit of attention called Hybrid Inspector. That was, it was kind of it was kind of touching on the same the same concept, just using. Showa era common writer instead of instead of um, instead of first generation Ultraman. Um, it got it got a, it got a lot of it got a lot of buzz. Then to then Toei happened. Then yeah. apparent apparently they had come to some kind of a, some kind of agreement, but the but the thing the thing was put on indefinite hiatus. And then I guess Subaraya Subaraya found out about the thing and picked him up and said and I guess said. Hey, um, that that thing you were doing with Common Rider, could you do that? Could you do something like that with Ultraman? And now Ultraman's once again pop more popular than ever, whereas Common Rider is still obscure here, is even in the wet, especially in the wet. Yeah, uh, but I I I want I want I bring that up as a kind of lesson of of don't interrupt your enemy when he makes a mistake and it's not it's not like the guy behind it was some sort of scrub he had already he had already had um lion barrels of iron under his belt which is actually pretty good um but I'd I'd say I'd say with um with something like Ultraman you that's not to say it would be easy there are still there are still a couple um pitfalls that you have to deal with. One of them being that whole that whole po that whole powered by the past thing, which I think I think that's going to be the easiest thing to hand wave. I'd say I'd say the bi the bigger issue that that is get that is going to happen is the so is twofold. One, the solo hero issue that we've talked about beforehand, and two, yeah, the time limit. Ah yes, the color timer. <laughs> now, here's here's where I can mitigate the the solo mission hero thing because there's actually an out for this. The crossover events. Now that I think Instead about of basing it on a solo in a, a solo uh, solo ultra story, have one based on some of the ultra galaxy fight events. 
I, I can de I can definitely see that, and even in even in something like Zet, there were there were a few instances where um where Ge where Geed or or previous ultras had showed up to help out Zet. Yeah, but it's still like solely focused on Zet. Mm -hmm. So you, you doing the Ultra Galaxy fight uh, scenarios would probably be much more effective because then you could have a whole team of ultras and deal with that. Plus, you don't have to worry about you know you could focus on the on those characters without having to go like full on into their backstories and everything like that. You could just focus on the mission and whatever developments come from that. Yeah, Not to mention that if you're using Ultra Galaxy, where there already is crossovers from multiple Ultramen, that opens the same multiverse door for character creativity as every other multiverse crossover type event. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter yeah. if you're working with established heroes from the actual canon, you can create your own Ultra. And it's just as equally valid because it's coming from somewhere in the Ultraverse of Ultramen. Yeah. I'd say I'd say um I'd say another I, the uh, using the Ultra Galaxy the, and those big those big crossovers or those, those big movie events opens up an, opens up another opportunity because let's not forget that the that when it comes to those there are there are there are a, there are allies of of that size and of that size and caliber who aren't ultras like like say um say say one of the say the Say some of the movies that Zero was in. He, you didn't have just Zero. You also had people like people like Mirror Knight, and unfortunately his name escapes me. Uh, but I always called him Hothead, largely because he's voiced by Hirayama. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but with just with just those three, you have you have a de you have a decent party all on its own there. Um, and I'd it's. I remember. I remember when I was um when I was taking notes for how, for um for the fact that I may I may be co I'm inevitably going to be coming covering the um Transformers RPG when that launches, um. One of the thing one of the things that I plan on arguing in that, and I'm I'm going to give a bit of a teaser here is, you don't need to set that particular thing on Earth, unlike um unlike uh, unlike other se unlike other series. Like. It's it would be very difficult to set to set Common Rider or Super Sentai on a planet that isn't Earth. Even though even though those series have di have dipped into have dipped into other dimensions. Once again, hi Gaim, hi Abba Ranger, <laughs> um, hi Q Ranger. <laughs> mm -hmm. But with but with Ultraman and with Transformers alike, you don't have that limitation. You could, for for all for for all accounts, you could end up you could end up making your own host of planets and using that. You are n by no by no means limited to just Earth. Yeah. Um. So, side note, by the way, Monk, just because I was also um curious, the Ultraman that Hiyama voiced that you're looking for is Ultraman King. Yeah, I, th I um. Great. Now you know you know things are bad when you're turning into Flutter. <laughs> hey, I was curious, oh. rather than just bringing up a wiki, and I didn't even bring up a wiki. I brought up IMDb. That's still a wiki. That's no, it's still not. a wiki, but yes, it is. It is it, by all intents and purposes because it is something that it can be edited by users. It is a fucking wiki. Just because it's not owned by fandom or or the, or the Wikipedia Foundation doesn't mean it doesn't count. It doesn't count because it's not in the name. <laughs> now you're gonna do this now. That's a weak ass argument. <laughs> that, I can I I can I can I can torment him. That is su that is such a stretch. It's like it's like having Plastic Man drawn and quartered. <laughs> <laughs> You can draw and quarter plastic man? That can't be possible. Well you could. It's just it's just um Well how do you how do you it would be it would be a case of it would be a case of stretching someone acro across the solar system. 
Oh. I like that idea. Let's do that. <laughs> or or or, stre or stretching his face so it can be like the, it can be like that one nightmare fuel of an e of an ending from Twisted Metal. Oh God! <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Ah. Mm. Uh, anyway, I did want to address the other side of the other issue that you had with the uh, you know powers of the past. Honestly, the only ultra the only t ultras that are going to have that problem are Ginga and Victory. And even then, it's a bit of a stretch there because they could transform into past ultras, sure, but they even they didn't do that very often. And every all the other right, all the other ultras after that just started mixing powers to create their own form. So really, you didn't have to worry about like having multiple, like having all the character sheets for all the past ultras. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, you still have the you still have the you still have the utility form problem, but I I would say that. I would say that I would say when it comes to the whole utility form issue, Ultraman has a somewhat easier t has a somewhat easier time with this than others because the f because for all intents and purposes, and I'll use Zet as an example, Zet's utility forms are essentially fighting styles. Yeah, and even then, there's also a limited amount of them. Like I don't think I've ever seen an Ultra use more than maybe four or five forms. It's um, it doesn't get eighty six if you're stretching it with like Jeed. Yeah, it does. It doesn't get. It doesn't get all. It doesn't get all that ridiculous, and you don't have to deal with um, you don't have to deal with wet with weapons that are specifically tied to that tied to them. They are in, at the end of the day um, fight fighting styles. Some of them, some of them lean some of them lean more into using martial arts strikes. Some of them lean more into using wrestling. Some of them lean into weird, into weirder ends, um, and of course, of course, upgrade forms are well, straight up upgrades. But the, but the, but at the, but the end, the, but you don't, have to, but in say, in say a lot of, in say a lot of up utility and upgrade forms in Common Rider or Super Sentai, there's usually some new form of weapon that is going to be a much more drastic change. Um, and in the and because because of and there's also the fact that um when it comes to the ultra when it comes to the ultra allies there's a bit more variety that you can get that you can get away with when it comes to their particular um power sets um and to be fair the the type the um color timer is not it is um. I'd say I'd say I'd say that's something that if I were to utilize it, I'd utilize it as a kind of reverse tension. I I e the I the actual the actual the actual num actual number of seconds that you have isn't as important. It's just a it would just be a meter that goes down whenever you whenever you um whenever you fail a roll, you know just to just to up just to up the tension of things. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh. Um, I'd obviously have to I'd obviously have to refine it, but the the point the point is is that the point is what with, with that sort of timer is to is to apply some sort of um, limit. And but the but when it comes to the when it comes to the pun not intended dark horse of Tokusatsu, um, Garo. Um, you can time limit's even more strict. I would of the of the of the four that we've mentioned, I would say that Garo has the easiest time being adapted into um, tabletop because you don't re you for one um, half half of half of a lot of half of a lot of stories in Garo are are just about invest are just investigative. You ha you have the fact that there's a horror leaning, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of fairy tale horror that you can draw from in that regard. Um, if you if you look at if you look at the original season of Garo, you you very you very much clearly have a um, a horror investigation kind kind of slant, which there's are there's already plenty of games that can, that can ha that can handle that pretty easily. Um, when it comes to when it, and 
there's also there's also the fact that um, even though it's obviously got to be set on Earth, the world within it is relatively consistent when it comes to when it comes to characters and powers. I mean, you're either, you are you already pretty much have two archetypes that you can play with in this kind of thing, be be it the Makai Knight or the or the priests. So you so you've yeah. ar you've already got two you've already got two two things set up there. Um, and you also don't have to worry too much about utility forms with it because they don't really have those. They just and the like any other form changes that do happen just tend to be like a one-off epic climactic thing. You wouldn't have to you could you had time to set something like that up, where the rest of the time they just use their base form. Mm -hmm. Now. Even with all of these, there is there is one there is one particular issue that ha that has to be that has to be addressed, and that is what 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 I re what is commonly referred to as meta plot. I.e. one of the I.e. one of the reasons that it's that it ends up being tricky to do to do a role playing game in se in settings like Warham like Warhammer 40k or BattleTech or Shadowrun or Legend of the or Legend of the Five Rings. Is the fact that you is the um, is the amount of um, is there is there is the question of how, of how of whether or not you are integrating the campaign that you're doing within the within the within established canon or if you're going your own route. Now, for me personally, my attitude with this kind of thing is if if the if the canon gets in the way, the canon gets shot. I apply rule zero to this to this kind of thing. So if I'm running an and I'm, think, <laughs> good. I was gonna say, thankfully, Garo doesn't really have that big of a problem with that because they've had generational changes to Garo. So you could just set it. You know, all you'd have to do is just set it in in, in, a, in a certain time uh, certain timeline, and you'd be good. Now the 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 anim the anime base um, leans leans more t leans more towards Europe than Japan. I mean, the Makai knights in general lead, lead more towards being European knights than they do anything else. So, and it, I think, I think it could be, I think it could be very easily argued that, um, that's that's a that's a that's a, that's a the say um the Garo armor arid, um mi migrated 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 eastward over the centuries since. You look at you look at the you look at the fir, you look at the um er, look at um a good chunk of the Garo animes, and they seem to be they there seems to be a whole lot of allusions to medieval Spain. Um, yeah, doesn't doesn't exactly doesn't exactly help that Mendoza looks looks like a looks like a Spanish priest. <laughs> <laughs> He's Sp Spanish or Portuguese. All all I'm saying is that I. Is that you look at his design and and tell me do, would he be out of place as a, as a boss in Blasphemous? No, he would not. And I love Blasphemous, so uh, yeah, he, he let me fight him. <laughs> oh. Blasphemous devs, if you're listening, as an expansion, you've got some inspiration there. You already you already did a you're already doing a crossover with Bloodstain, so why not? <laughs> But I, when it comes, I'd say um, I'd say something else that's something else that is a bit of an issue that you don't you don't have to deal with as much in something like Garo is the is the whole two is the whole two character sheet issue because you you look at the you look at the way because um, Makai knights can very clearly hold their own even in their quote unquote civilian or or um untransformed state. They're trained. That's how they become Makai Knights in the first place. Mm -hmm. They have to qualify. With um, but with but at, compare that with with the with the characters in in certain in certain Sentai, or in or cer or certain Ultra characters, or um or certain common writers. Are there are there ones that have gone through some degree of some degree of tr of training? Yes, but I wouldn't exactly I wouldn't exactly say in a lot of them it's training at the same degree. Um I I'll use I'll use um 
I'll use Blade as an example. The the prime the, the two primary writers of Blade were had you can assume had some training under Board. But I wouldn't exactly consider what they I wouldn't exactly consider Board a militaristic organization. It very much felt like a um research and defense organization. And a lot a lot of the organizations you see you see in um you see in the Ultra series they're very clearly they're very clearly on the sciency end of things not it not a not a um not a small not a small scale um level of military discipline the closest thing i can think of to trained uh writers uh ironically saber um most of the sort of logos members are trained mm -hmm. um as part of being part of Sword of Logos, but our main character was not part of Sword of, Sword of Logos, so he was not trained. Mm -hmm. He learned by doing. And all of all of these examples are set aside when you come to Makai Knights because Makai Knights are trained from childhood. They're um, they're tr I'd say I'd say their training is is on is on similar level, is on similar levels to um. I, I hesitate to bring it up, but but I I can't, but I end up thinking of Jedi. You know, when it I was thinking more squires to a knight, since they are knights. That is yeah. that is that is that is, very, that is very much true, especially since you have to you essentially have to be an apprentice for quite a while before before you're um before you're able to even try and um become and become a knight, and even then, um that's not a guarantee that you'll inherit that you'll inherit an armor because. The ar the armors are n are in very very short supply, and also semi sentient. <laughs> there's oh there's also the f there's also the fact that the s that the um that the way the way um the way so the way soul metal works it's extremely volatile. Like even just even just it takes a significant amount of training, even to, even to lift soul metal. Yep. There's a lot of different things that go into into that training and into being a member of the Makai Knights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, another thing uh, with Garo is that you can you can easily skirt around the whole solo hero aspect. You know, sure, the original Garo, the chapter of the Black Wolf, was pretty solo oriented, even though you had also uh, Zero. But not only do you have Makai priests to tag alongside your Makai knights, but multiple Makai knights can work together in the case of stuff like uh, Yamio Tarasamono. Mm-hmm. Well, you have Makai priests that you can follow around when they're not being shitbags and trying to take down the organization themselves. <laughs> Again, you have Yamiyo and I love Garo. Such oh, good stuff. There's, there's, there's also the, there. Now, when it comes to when it comes to the. Um, now, obviously, since I brought up the color timer with um, Ultraman, I ha I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the col the um, 99.9 .9 second timer with with um with the Makai Knight armors. But I'd say Pretty much um, a similar vein there. It it, oh. it is on a similar vein, but there's one other avenue that I do that I do th I do think can be applied to that ha that has um that has been engineered down to a science through ga through games like the <coughs> Storyteller system and games that are inspired by that setup and truth be told i had considered this when i did when i wanted to do my own when i wanted to do my own spin and that is that is the fact that um one's Im that there are t that there are two ways to uh, to ascent to essentially essentially cross the threshold and become a lost beast one of them of course is going is going over that time limit the other is go is going is um is is when you're in a state of emotional instability 
because because let's not forget soul metal is ver is very respondent to to the me to the mental state of its wielder yeah and that was that was the kind of thing that caused the chain of events that led Kiba to becoming the black wolf I would say you kind of have something akin to a sand check type of thing when if the story a lot requires it and then also have like a generous set amount of turns for each combat encounter the the approach that the approach that I was con that I was considering taking taking a cue from vampire is that is that you have is that you have to is that you have to balance um you have to balance two resources justice and vengeance Um, one co I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure looking at that there could be the assumption that I'm t that I'm doing the whole paragon renegade thing I'm not the the I'm not the appro the approach that I'm going with with this is that um you can you 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 can you you can utilize you can utilize justice to help to help aid you um vengeance can vengeance can provide a much bigger boost but it has bigger risks and obviously, obviously, that obviously that's just a spitball of an idea. But the but the point is, in do, in doing this setup, you have you have the uh, you have the um, you don't ha you you have uh, you have other avenues because Goro, at its core, leans far more into horror than than uh, than other tokusatsu. And this is. Evidenced no more by the fact that the f that the enemies of the Makai Knights are known as horrors. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Kinda pretty on the nose on that one. <laughs> I mean, but if you look at the horrors, that's a very fitting name. It's a pretty apt description of the damn things. Oh yeah. For anybody who wants a, a, a look at a at an early horror, I mean, do keep in mind that the original Garo it it used earlier. 2000s CG, but it was actually really good use of 2000s CG too. Um, just look at the Inga, the Inga horror. <laughs> yeah, that thing well, is. I mean, this fucking creepy looking. Well, th this is this is Kita Amamiya at like with no restrictions. <laughs> just finally getting to make the stuff he's always wanted to make, and it shows. Yeah, just look at a basic Inga horror, though. I mean, there's each Inga horror te technically takes its own form later on in its life, but there's the the the, the very first Inga horror we see in in the series in the original Garo is fucking. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> a DM would have a fun time getting to describe these kind of things. Remember, yeah. Remember when? Remember? Remember when we did the Degenesis one shot, and I and I had to and I had to describe the um, the some some of the hor some of the horrific scenes with the maggots. Yeah, you're right. A DM a DM would have a field day because I know I did. <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I gave. Some, I'm pretty sure I gave somebody. Somebody nightmares somewhere with the whole, um, scorpions that that have spider web that can shoot spider webs. Dur during um Numenera. Along with a lot of the other stuff that happened in Numenera, least of which being um death by snoo snoo. <laughs> death by snoo snoo. But yeah, the. For a specific example, the first horror in the first in the very first Garo series, uh, Angle or Ongure, if you want to be more Japanesey about it, um, just that thing alone, the CG and everything, it's it's uh, very impressive for the time, and it makes it look like this is the type of of artistry I would expect from. Uh, early Hellraiser, 
uh, Giger's works, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. This is a type of disgusting horror show that you would expect from that type of uh, that type of person on the western side of the world. And so that's that's really good. Mm -hmm. And and I'd I'd say I'd say some I'd say something else to to con to consider is the fact that one of one of the things one of the things that struck me the that struck me the most when it came to Garl when we and we talked about this when we did the episode on it was how was how it handled um, fights. You did you didn't have a whole lot of blasting going around. In fact, it it wasn't in, it. It wasn't until the quote unquote the quote the quote unquote future arc that that we saw that we saw a Makai knight with with a with a ranged weapon. And uh, as we pointed out earlier, Makai knights being able to hold their own outside of the armor is exceptionally important. Um, much of the series, a, 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 any of the series that you watch. The fights are an escalating set of scale uh, set of scales of conflict and resolution. Uh, it's only at the ultimate the ultimate finish of the fight that a Makai Knight dons his armor in order to finish the battle, as it were. Because because yeah, because you have to be very. They don't really. They can't just whip out the armor willy nilly, given all those given the restrictions it has. Yeah, and of course. Uh, Koga, um, when he is fighting Engle in the first episodes of of Garo, uh, whips his fucking ass. Like he has him on the ropes most of that fucking fight. Mm -hmm. Koga is no slouch, <laughs> and uh, and because of it all, uh, when he when he dons the armor, it rather than feeling like a phase of the battle. It feels more akin to a finishing move. Pretty, pretty much, and of, of course, um, Triforce's soundtrack work and and Jam Project helping out as well doesn't exactly hurt. But the only <laughs> but, no. But throughout that, the only the only consistent, the only um, repeat up, the only repeat upgrade that happens is get is one getting access to the horse and two getting access to um, Garo Zanba. Which all all that that is 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 him t is him taking notes from 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 our from our favorite paladin from Super Robot Wars. <laughs> Can you really call him a paladin? Yes. He has he smites. <laughs> he He's cleaves. It's the sword that cleaves evil. Damn it! <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying. TG had way too much fun by 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 photoshopping him with the whole "You are huge." That means you are huge evil. Cleave and smite. <laughs> yes. He, it, it, <laughs> it's essentially a zanmato. That's all it is. It's a yeah. zanmato. With which makes makes sense if you're makes sense if you're going to be using if you're going to be riding a horse to use that kind of thing. Um, is there's all oh, there? I'd say something else that's 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 in an advantage is the fact that the world of the world of Garo, even even if it takes pl even if you have it take place in say a city, there's a whole lot. There's a whole. It does it does something that we that we saw a lot in the '90s of. The supernatural underbelly with it within an urban environment. Um, I'd actually be I'd actually be curious if anybody in the writing staff had watched uh, had watched the had watched the good Blade movies when developing the series. Makes sense. Also, the more I think about it, because of the investigative nature of Garo, like a lot of the uh, non-combat stats would come in, would actually be coming to play in a lot more often. The best example I could think of is the episode where Koga has to try to bluff his way through a poker game when he's never played poker in his goddamn life. Yeah. 
<laughs> the amount of checks that had to happen for that to work. Mm -hmm. Especially at the end, when he fooled the guy, when he fooled the horror into thinking he had a winning hand, when he had the, that jack fucking shit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, ignorance is the best bluff. It's a very, yes. a, it's a very Akagi Shigeru thing to do. <laughs> and the fact that he did that against Kohei Murakami just made it all the sweeter, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Which, as as a bit as a bit of an aside, um. If you if you want to if you want to see the if you want to see the greatest use of mahjong, watch Akagi. The fir <laughs> his fir his first his his first his first his first foray into reach style mahjong. He um he ends up he ends up blat he ends up blatantly cheating when one of the people at the table is a fucking yakuza, who does who. But he, but the yakuza can't do anything because there because there's a cop watching the whole game. <laughs> and he, and the full title is Akagi the genius who descended into darkness and there's of course the there's which is a spin-off of Kaiji both of both of them are absolute classics um and re Although, e although even with that, I'm still not confident enough to, to say that I could hold my own and reach Mahjong. I know I'd get my ass kicked, because Mahjong is a um, rabbit hole of a game. <laughs> especially, especially Japanese reach style. Let's not get into Reichi Mahjong, please. You'll have, a better you'll have a better time getting into it by playing the Yakuza games, I'll put it that way. And even then, you won't understand half of it. <laughs> but there is there is certainly that because while while um while a Makai knight is is given an is given an order, it's not it's not like it's not like the it's not like the organization tells him where where a um where a horror is. In fact, that's up to his madogu. And even and even and even then, it's not like it. It's not like the Madogu can t can tell him like it like a G like a GPS location or something like that. Just that he senses horrors nearby. Mm -hmm. Oh. And then it, of course, see, Makai Knights, in inclusion to having to train for things like combat and the use of soul metal, and trust me, that alone is very rigorous. Makai Knights are basically. Sherlock Holmes too. And actually, They're all fucking investigative detectives. <laughs> actually, the the more that I think about it, there is um. If I if I there are there are two characters in Western media that would be that would be ap that would be apropos to to the t to um Garo that you can that you can use as kind of a foundation to ha to help a, to help a table understand what they're getting into. Um, the fur. The first one, and this is this is this is more in the tone end of things than anything else, is um, Constantine. Even though a Makai Knight yeah. is going to be far more disciplined than than Constantine was, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> Although you could probably you could John Constantine's kind of a loose handle. You could pro you could probably re you could probably reskin John Constantine as a as a um as a as an expelled. Um, Makai priest who's too who's too useful to completely excommunicate and causes way too many issues for the rest of the Makai order. Well, I I mentioned this in the past. The anytime anytime that you use John Constantine in a story, there it there it it, it is somewhat tied to someone or something that he that in the past he um he fucked he fucked over in one more in one form or another, and doubly so if Midnight is involved. Mm-hmm. But the other, the other one, and I'd, I'd say, I'd say this is, I'd say this is apropos when it comes to, when it comes to the job of a Makai knight, would be Geralt of Rivia. Oh yeah, Geralt is absolutely a Makai knight in everything, but you know, not having soul metal. Um, but he does the investigating and he does the monster slaying, just like every Makai Knight does. Yeah, because 
doing Witcher's work is n is not ju is not a case of like an of like an MMO of ki of kill three trash mobs or something like that. No, you end up going to you end up going <coughs> to where to where the, to where the monster was spotted. Go in um looking into looking into the place to see to see to see any sort of telling things to figure out what sort of monster you're dealing with. Then then trying to then trying to track down its its layer. And it's it's not like it's not like you just you just go bar you just go barging in, um. There, you have to you have to figure out what's the best way to draw it out. Whether whether it be whether it be with whether it be with bait or or with signs, and only then can you can can you confront the thing. And of course, of course, then you you get the you get the trophy and you get and you get paid and th and then told to screw off because everybody's afraid of witchers. Because yeah, the, the, the Mackay. You get the guy bang at some point. <laughs> but, yeah, but notice the girls that you get to bang at some point are both uh, sorceresses. So uh, I think it's more because they understand what being outside society is like. Mm -hmm. um. Be that as it may, uh, that's one issue Mackay Knights don't have because they are a secretive organization. Yeah, and that that's also the reason why I why I brought up um World of Darkness. World none of the World of Darkness games would would provide a mechanical template. Um but I do th I do think the con I do think the concept of the World of Darkness certainly would, especially say the organiz the especially say the rules of say the Masquerade in Vampire the Masquerade. Keep in mind that that's not just a title; it's a understood agreement between all between a good amount of the vampire clans that you the will Camarilla not, specifically, yeah, the especially the Camarilla that you will not try and you will not try and draw too much human attention to the existence of vampires. Yeah, the Camarilla want to continue to keep the mas masquerade, and those outside of the Camarilla are tired of hiding. They usually want to find a way to overcome the masquerade it's ju it's just that the camarilla have well a lot of power ventru bastards <laughs> Ven Ven clan ventru owning the world so you don't have to <laughs> even if you want to mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but uh yeah, a combination of of Geralt in his in his role, along with the idea of a hidden world, a la World of Darkness, is very very close to Garo. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can definitely agree with with, with that combined assessment. Now, um, I'd I'd say rega regardless of system, one th regardless of system th used, there is one per there is one hallmark of a lot of tabletop games that I would heavily discourage. When it comes to picking out a system, any game that utilizes grid combat, no. Yeah, because these because Tokusats is by the definition of the genre all about the special effects. Um, grid combat is going to harshly restrict achieving those uh, those particular effects of of. Everything we see in Tokusatsu shows, mm -hmm. um, it's it's the same limitation that grid combat would impose on anything anime as well. Um, theater of the mind is usually better for these things. Yeah, yeah, and actually, it's a good example. Uh, there is a video game that tried to do a, a grid combat system for this, and uh, it's all right. It was a good game, but you could tell that there, that limitation hurt them. Chroma Squad. Yeah. Oh. Um. And as much it, as I love Chroma Squad, you are one hundred percent correct. Yeah, try. You know, it was fun as hell. There's some good strategy to it, but if you want to do all the cool stuff, like you know, use their like team weapons, the combined weapon, you have to get everyone in just the right spot and hope that the monster doesn't kill any of them before they get there. Yeah. Not to mention, not to mention, you then once everybody's in the right spot, you have to wait till next turn to have everybody but one person use the support. Um, action in order to uh, have the last person use the combined fight. Uh, it's it's annoying. And yeah, it's you. 
I like Chroma Squad, but that but that was going to be a limitation <coughs> since they were u since they were utilizing the um t the tactic style the tactic style approach, meaning tactic style um, movement. And yeah. I'd I'd say I'd, now if you absolutely insist on having some sort of grid set up or some sort of battle map, now in in this i.e. i.e. you won't bet you won't bend on this kind on this kind of thing because you don't want to do theater of the mind. Instead, consider a zone based system, a la um, Wild Arm the Wild Arms um, five, because Wild Arms four does not exist. What? Exactly. Since in that in that one you ha in the hex system that it had, you could have multiple you could have multiple party members occupying the same hex. And it's and that also applied to en that also applied to enemies, which made it significantly easier to do team attacks. I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's a perfect solution, but it's at least a better solution than grid combat. You could also use um, some of the squad systems we've seen in Super Robot Wars games to assign multiple people to the squad, or to buddy up. Yeah, that is, that is that is that is that's going to that's going to have a, that's going to have a few pitfalls, but it's certainly better than straight up grid combat. Um, well, and then in the games where you did have the squad slash buddy up systems, you could separate buddies and combine buddies on the fly on the. Uh, if you had the same teams, in in the same in that same regard, I would also advise against any game that has a detailed skill system. You'll re you'll recall that um, during ha when when it was announced that it, that Hasbro was going to be doing a tabletop Power Rangers, I was furious at the notion that the, that they might end up using. Um, the 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 D and D style D twenty system. Instead, they had uh, wasn't it Rampage Studios came up with a with a new uh Renegade. a new D twenty system for or, yeah, yeah Renegade they've came up with that. They've come up with something called Essence twenty that feels it feels a lot like Savage Worlds. And to be fair, a um Savage Worlds plays plays much faster and looser, and it and was purposely designed for more pulpy style camp style um campaign settings which we, might actually work in favor yes the other the but the other reason that the other the other thing is that um i would highly advise either using a game that already has one or implementing some kind of stunt system because the if you all know that i hate that i absolutely hate i hit it with my sword mentality that that is just with um fantasy games but with something like this where where the where the action is as much a performance as anything else basic attack is even more inexcusable i mean we have seen uh, again i <clears throat> as much as i love all of garo i i gravitate most towards koga i don't know why um Probably just because of the fact that the man was a stoic badass and never ever leaves my brain. Uh, it's the coat. It, yes, it's definitely the fucking great coat. It's absolutely the coat. <laughs> it's absolutely just the great coat, of course. But uh, <laughs> um, the the again using the first fight against Engle, uh he was kicking that man around large gallery rooms in an art gallery and you know smashing him up upwards downwards wall to wall pillar to pillar mm -hmm. Angley could not get a fucking break so it definitely is a performance as much as it is a fight uh well, and uh the better you perform the worse off the enemy is the other reason i bring that kind of thing up and this is something a lot of a lot of people a lot of people are unaware of when it comes to when it comes to the motifs of tokusatsu and to an extent several motifs in battle anime a lot of it is descended from the motifs and habits of kabuki theater whether it be when you can when you consider when you consider obviously there's the there's the well obvious part some of the some of the ridiculous amounts of amounts of color and it, and poses 
They even have a na- they even have a special name for certain for certain poses in Kabuki called Mie. Yep. Which is which is why which is why um the the absurd poses in JoJo aren't all that absurd when you think about it. The absurd poses in JoJo are nowhere near as absurd as some Mie. Mm-hmm. Anyone who's ever seen any Kabuki knows that those poses are large, grandiose, exaggerated, and sometimes comical as fuck. Yeah. Um. Well, I, the same with their with their costumes and their makeup, though. It's meant to tell as part of the storytelling of Kabuki. Yeah, there's um, there's there's actually there. It's it's very it's very easy to apl- to apply to apply some of the, to apply some aspects of how professional wrestling works to um, how Kabuki works in terms of in terms of the performance. Not not as a one not as a one to one thing, but when it comes to certain beats, like say, like say um, like say in, like say in wrestling the stuff stuff like the hot tag or se- or setting up for a finisher or or set or setting up for the for the heat. Mm-hmm. Um, and that honestly, if you uh, and I'd say if, I'd say if you want an, if you want an anime example of. Of the of the kind of stuff that can be that can be seen in, um, Kabuki. I'll get. I'm gonna try and. I'm gonna. This is. This was one of the longer names of, of an anime that I had to put up with, and I'm not. Even, I'm not even sure if it's been dubbed. You might. You might have to do a bit of digging for this one. But, Bakumatsu, Kikanhetsu, Irohani Hoeto. It was it was one of it was one of it was a very early attempt to do an to do an anime sp- solely on a streaming service, and it they also they also somehow wrangled um wrangled one of fi- one of one of Yuki Hara, Yu, um Yuki Kajiura's um fiction junction ladies to ha- to handle the opening. But. I do I do feel that I do feel that in general more narrativist games would be instead instead of more crunch heavy games would be the smart way to go for this kind of thing. As much as I like mutants and masterminds that would be a terrible idea. Because you'd have to you'd have to deal with how to set, how to set up powers and how to and how to set up the whole transformed state. So you would need multiple character sheets. And it's not like it's not like the Bard in Darkness Rising, where somebody's going to make fifty pages. <laughs> there's oh, there's also the there's also the fact there's also the fact that I do I do th- I do think that the concept of fail forward needs to be needs to be applicable in a to- any Tokusatsu themed campaign. Um, fail forward is the is the idea that. Um, a fi- a failed role is not a narrative stop, which is one of the, which is one of those things that can happen. Remember, um, remember how Lady K got the curse of the Wiffle Bat? <laughs> if she's mad at if no. she's, she kept she kept whiffling that I she kept whiffing on roles that I call, that I started to call her Wiffle Bat. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, then, of course, then there was the, um, then there was the, the, the moment of glorious, glorious salt of, oh, oh, no, don't worry about me. I got, I got this. I'm, I got this. I'm perfectly fine. I'm feel, I'm feeling good about this role. Rolls. Natural one. (laughs) Ooh. I wish I, I wish I, I wish I was on camera just so I could put up a shit eating grin because, as soon as as soon as I heard as soon as I heard her say say um ha- being confident in the role, I was like, "You're gonna get fucked by the dice, you know that." <laughs> if there is one how life thing works, that... hmm? that's how life works. Uh, the d- I'm gonna laugh my ass off on that because I was sitting right there when that happened. Oh yeah. I could I could hear her seething. 
because <laughs> because she's getting it not just from you but from me. <laughs> Look, the dice gods do do not do not like arrogance. Even even though she even though she wasn't, if you if you think that the dice gods are going to be on your side, they're not. Always assume that they're going to fuck you. RN Jesus as, is not your savior. He mm -hmm. does not save. Mm -hmm. Yes, because as as we have established many many times here in the monastery, the dice gods show no mercy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, but now. Savage Worlds is, cer is certainly one is certainly one that could be done with. Um, I would say e even though it would require some hackery, um, Byte RPG is significantly modular that you could possibly get away with it. Um, Feng Shui Two, you would you would have to do, you would have to do a lot to make it work, but it is but it is doable, especially since Robin D. Laws wrote a book called Blowing Up the Movies. Which is all about all about looking at how you could do how you could emulate um, the the kind of action in ver in various films, especially Hong especially Hong Kong, um, uh, e either e either in the John, either in the John Woo style of things or in the or or in the Wuxia style of things into in, into ta into tabletop, and give, given the fact that it's given the fact that it's all about it's all about um, crazy action. You can you could get away you could get away with it in, in that, um. Like I like I said before like I said before I even though the, we there's some leanings to the world of darkness I'd be hesitant to use any entry of world of darkness, for one simple reason, they're all far too tied to their setting. The only one the only the only entry I can possibly th I could possibly think of that you could util that you could utilize for at least at the very least Garo is Hunter the Vigil. And once again, that's a massive ass stretch. There's every en every entry in the in the World of Darkness line, whether it be vampire, werewolf, mage, um, <laughs> ge um ge geist, mummy, demon, the God Machine, what have you? Chain changeling Chain changeling they all have their own set set of set of rules for rules for the for the characters um fa um factions and so on and because because of that it's some it's not something that translates um you would have to bl you would have to blow up huge chunks of it but maybe you could make 10 rebancho <laughs> zero work actually no you wouldn't no, Go ahead. You wouldn't have to blow up huge chunks of it. I think I think you'd have to make a whole. I think you'd have to mess with the archetype system. You you may have to change around the archetypes, but Ten Rabancho isn't as tied to to um and the to more setting. That, the more that I the more that I think about it, the the um a lot of the transforming hero archetypes, Tenra already has a transform already has several um transformation archetypes you can utilize. Mm -hmm. The um. The samurai is one of them. Um, mm -hmm. Certain certain entries when it comes to the analids is another, especially yep. anybody who ha who has the demon <clears throat> of battle analid and the demon of battle analid is just Giver with with extra steps. <laughs> yes, Giver with and Giver is just biological tokusats. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say I'd say. And there's there's also there's also the fact there's also the fact that within those within those transformations, um, the main thing the main thing that changes is at best three ability scores. Yeah, it's not drastic. Mm -hmm. The more drastic things come with um, the armor pilots because the the pilots themselves are kind of weak, but then inside the armor you add the stats of the armor to their stats. Oh yes. <laughs> Uh, there's, there's a lot of different, I, I actually think, uh, I was actually going to bring this up earlier when we were still talking common writer and the, and the problem of the, of the, I want to be the hero, um, because of Tenra Bancho's scene system and how not everyone is involved in every scene so that other players can give out 
accolades to the people in the scene, and that's kind of how the the reward system of the game works. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like maybe not using all of Tenra Bancho, but using that particular structure could be exceptional for a game for for games that would feature Tokusatsu heroes where the singular hero is a one man army. I will note that there was one, that there was one common writer TRPG made in Japan that that was a fan project distributed at um, Comic Cat called Masquerade Style. I um I can't comment too much on it because I only have some disparate notes about how it works. Because unfortunately, unfortunately, when it comes to Japanese tabletop, it's tabletop, it's very slim pickings. Most of them aren't translated. The few that do get translated are things like Ten Rabancho Zero. Mm-hmm. Um, um, as, temp- as tempting <clears throat> as it would be to use Made, because it re- because it referenced it referenced um, Common Rider Ryuki not once but twice. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Made the RPG is so fun, Monk. <laughs> um, I'd say an, I'd say another one that would that would work simply because of how simplistic it is is Anima Prime, not to be confused with Anima Beyond Fantasy. Um, Two different games. Anima Prime because of the because of because of the whole um, because of the fact that you essentially have a a um, po- a pool of de- of action degrees. What well, what with the whole what well, with the whole um, action charge and strike dice that you have that you roll every round. You can ha- you can have you can have a variety of tactics you- that you utilize every turn, but you you may have noticed a pattern that a lot of the games that I've that I've touched on here are are very um are very are very narrativist and ve- and very um and very loose in their designs. And, and that, again, that that's almost. I wouldn't say a necessity, but that's almost a, uh, a a universal boon. Mm-hmm. It's just going to make everything easier for what comes after, um. Um, because of because of how not only the action but the stories and everything else work with Tokusans. Yeah. One thing that I would give one bit of advice that I would give to anyone who. Um... Who it who is to, who is doing their own hand at at this kind of thing? Do not assume that you have to directly emulate an existing series word for word. That was that was the problem I had with Hyperforce, and that is the problem I had with the with the um, shitficial <laughs> Avatar RPG. I was a uh... Earlier, when we were talking about Star Wars Galaxies, I wanted to bring up, hey, Avatar Legends has the same issue! About <laughs> not including the Avatar as a book at all, period. Their reasoning also for, using... not, for not including the Avatar was bullshit. <laughs> it is bullshit. Unlike Galaxies, which had a legitimate reason for not allowing everyone to willy-nilly be Jedi. Um, but, be that as it may... Um, <laughs> It's also, you know, not really a good powered by the apocalypse game either. We've we've made that clear. Shade shades for what it's worth the the explanation for why for why the avatar isn't playable in Avatar Legends. I'm and I'm quote I'm quoting the I'm quoting the interview from Dicebreaker. Some things should remain mysterious. <laughs> Okay, if you're going to come up with if you're going to have a reason for not including the avatar, come up with a better excuse than that. That was that was the one they came out with, and the and we and we had pointed out that there was an avatar that there was an avatar if in all but name game that came that that's already out called Legend of the Elements that includes it. There's a there's a there's a bunch of DM there's a bunch of fiat when it com, when, there's a bunch of um warnings in warnings in advance when it comes to it, but it is possible. For me, I, now, ju- I just, they could have easily. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, I was gonna say they could have easily just made the "everyone wants to be the doctor" argument. And I'm pretty sure most of us would agree. Yeah, even even with, even with that, in in the in just because just because of the uh, to use the to, to bring it back to that whole "everyone wants to be the doctor" argument, even in the Doctor Who RPGs, there's ways to get around that. 
the last time that I ran a Doctor Who campaign, I had said, okay, none, you don't, none of you are Time Lords. None of you know how a TARDIS works. You are all members of Torchwood. Which is awesome because Torchwood's actually a pretty cool and um, pretty cool organization. Yeah, Torchwood unit. I already have. I already have something that is pre that is pre built for that kind of thing. Um, with with um with the FFG Star Wars. When we ran when when we did that one shot of Age of Rebellion, none of none of you were a Jedi. You were re you were uh, Rebellion soldiers. Just with just, yeah. just with different areas of expertise, um, the le when I when I would run Edge of the Empire campaigns, if you want to, if you want a template for how I did those, look at the Mandalorian. I I leaned far more into the sp into the space western than anything else. And to be honest, allowing people to be Mandalorians would not actually be that game breaking. Not r not really. In fact, in fact, it would actually. In fact, it would. Um, you would. There. There would be. There would be certain um, questions that that would have that would have to be that would have to be answered. But, but, uh, but all that all that they are are just are just, re are just really good are just really good soldiers. Yep. <laughs> um. They just have a predisposition for it. Yeah. And when and um. In the, I'd say I'd say in the I'd say in the case of um, of something like Garo, I could ease I could easily set up a campaign of, none of you are Makai knights, you're apprentices. And that that and could work. Your your apprentices eventually you eventually you will become you will become knights and you'll and and you'll end up t and you'll end up taking bigger assignments. But for now. Your your apprentices, and if you don't and if you don't work together, you're all gonna die. That's almost the tack that um, the Dark Heresy games take. You're not an Inquisitor; you're the Inquisitor's retinue. Yeah. Don't die now. <laughs> Spoilers: They're gonna die. <laughs> Is that really a spoiler when it's fucking 40k? Um, and we're not talking about super enhanced people. Even when we're talking about super enhanced people, it's it's not a spoiler. Just say touche. Um, touche. Now, obvious, obviously, um, when it comes to when it comes when it comes as far as far as as far as something as far as something like Common Rider, um, I'd I'd say I'd say the um as as much as as much as I've criticized it. I do think that there are aspects of, say, Agito, that provide that provide a decent template because you have three you have three writers from distinctly different backgrounds. Granted, one of those three writers suffers from the Wharf principle for for um, for a good chunk of the series, but it is but <laughs> it is still it is still a um, f it is still a factor. Um, uh, the good old Wharf effect. Because much as I like the concept of the G three, he spent he spent a large chunk of his fights getting his ass kicked and had to be bailed out by Agito. <laughs> it wasn't until G three X or as I call it G or as I call it G three Daka. that he that he at least at least started to get to um to actually actually win some fights. Um of course, of course, uh, of course, the early the early days of the early days of Ga of Gaim can Gaim can work as can work as well. You and I'm I'm not saying emulate these word for word, but use these as a kind of template. In this, in the same way that um, if someone if someone was if someone was if someone was if someone was running a well. Get, given given its popularity, if someone was running a My Hero Academia themed camp theme um, campaign, as cliche as it is, I would probably I would probably use the sports festival as sports festival arc as a bit of a template. I loved the sports one -on -one battles to set up right there. I loved the sports uh, the the sports festival arc yeah. that was. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, I I know uh, I know that everybody rolls their eyes about tournament arcs, 
But the reason tournament arcs keep showing up is because they're a reliable way to in to introduce and utilize a large amount of characters in a way that isn't going to overwhelm. And it also is a good way to show how some characters have grown and how other other characters have uh, become more versatile. Yeah. Um, side note, uh, keep keep a watch in the near future for our UA Great Lakes creations. Oh, yeah. That's, com that's coming back since, since now I'm confident enough to do sequels to stuff we've talked about in the past. Um, when it, but when, as far, as far as I'd say, um, I'd say when it comes to template, we are, we already highlighted what can be, what can be a proper template for, for an ultra entry. And that is the, that is the galaxy fight movies. Now, is there the issue that you'd have to introduce a, bu you'd have to introduce a bunch of ostensibly new ultras and ultra allies yeah, but um, there's an easy way to there's an easy way to do that. You have some kind of you have some kind of um, incident happening on on a planet that that the ultras don't that the ultras aren't as familiar with. They sent they send in essentially a, essentially a unproven a relatively unproven rookie to to that planet, and the other the other party members are residents of of that planet or that part of space. Or just ha or just happen to be in that part of space for one reason or another. I'd say I'd say that would be an easy way to do it. I one of the, the tricky th whenever when doing um when doing fan when doing fantasy campaigns, you can easily have an id medius res with the whole thing of of you all of you all meet in a tavern. As as much of a cliche as that is, it keeps happening because it's an easy way to get the ball rolling. Um, it also makes sense in context. Oh yeah, um, and to to its credits, um, one one particular concept that I've that I've seen in a lot of fantasy anime that I, that I that I um, wholeheartedly approve of and have and and th and think it should be integrated more often is the idea of adventuring as a as a legit profession. You know what what with uh, what with get what with guilds ranks and the like. Goblin Slayer has this. Fairy Tale has this. Um, Beat the Vandal Buster has this. the the idea that the idea that going out and doing monster slaying isn't just a murder hobo thing. It's a th it's a thing where you're do where where it's a legit profession. And if you, uh, I, uh, we all hate the word realism here, mm -hmm. but if you look at, at how a a society where magic and magical monsters and large-scale threats to sentient species that are mostly peaceful exist. Even in a, in a world of pure fantasy, governments would still want to curtail and suppress as many threats, natural threats, and well, other threats from other countries, as possible from their... Uh, their you know for the for their citizens for whether it's because their citizens are a resource they're exploiting and they they only need to make sure that the citizens stay peaceful so they can exploit them ccp <laughs> or uh it's because they actually have a care for their citizens is immaterial a government wants stability mm -hmm. um and creating an economic reason for that for that that stability to be maintained is vital. A guild and adventuring system and adventuring as a profession makes more sense in fantasy anime and in, in fantasy in general than fantasies where they don't exist, unless you're in an area specifically where uh, there's low to no governance. Yeah. Now, the reason I bring that kind of thing up is because the you all meet in a tavern is not something that you can utilize in supers in general, and especially not in Tokusats. Um, while there, <laughs> while there's plenty, while there's plenty of, when you when you really think about it, even even in these stories that have some degree of in medias res, event inevitably you will have you will have the how I came to join the group um, story. Uh, in the case of um, Sentai, in most cases, I should say. Uh, either they're gathered from similar social strata of life, such as in, uh, 
I would I would guess to say uh, such as in um, well no Ryu Soldier doesn't work because there's that's actually being an entire society unto itself. Mm -hmm. But even in in Kira Major, uh, people will argue well they're from completely different social strata. No, they're all from a social strata of creativity. I mean that was the entire point of Kira Major to let your yeah. creativity sparkle and shine. Yeah. Um, in so, there is there is the fact that in, in some teams um, you do you you do have you do have a mix of people who've been there for a while and pe and people who were ju were just in the wrong place at the wrong time but ended, but ended up making the right decision in the end that is, cer mm -hmm. that is certainly a thing um, but but the point is is, is that um I'd I'd say if you really if you really want to insist on the whole, on the whole on the whole the team the team's already a already a full team from the get go. Honestly, the only um the only the the only one I can the only one that I can think of where you could kind of utilize something like that is Time Ranger. Time Ranger, um, I mean, Bokenger. Um, and that, they're all that's from just, the same organization. Yeah, and grant, granted, having having them all be in the same organization from the get go does get around this problem, but I wouldn't say it's a fix to the problem, and it does bottleneck the kind of um, origin stories that you can have. Yeah, um, it, you really got. In this case, you really have to tailor everything to, you know, your audience. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to when it come, I'd say um I'd I'd say when it comes to when it comes to common when it comes to um common writer um you def you most definitely can't do the whole you meet, the only way you could possibly do the whole you meet you all meet in a tavern is is the idea of once again all from the same organization it's just you were all made into cyborgs but you escaped which actually, or, would, be, um... actually would be a de actually that kind of thing would be a decent session zero. Actually, uh, you're you're kind of wrong there. Um, Gaim, they all met in the same fruit juice bar. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Come on. Oh, I, oh, no, I know. That's... It's just bringing up bringing up juice bar with me brings up um, other things. MMPR Ernie's juice bar. <laughs> Sorry, that had to be said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But the fa but the fact of the matter is is that is that the now one now one might say what why are you, why are you making such a big deal about the origin when when the, when you may be go you may be going over several sessions in a campaign because if you stum if you stumble at the beginning you're gonna have you're going to continue to have stumbling issues or teething troubles as it were throughout throughout the re throughout the rest of your narrative. In short, a very old proverb. A house built on shaky foundations cannot stand. That's why origins matter, people. Mm -hmm. Although, it, although, although, even with origins mattering, um, I would ha I would heavily advise not t not taking not taking the route that certain idiots have done and try and and try and make origins the only thing that matter. Hi, Ray. You still suck. <laughs> and if you want, if I need to use an example less less obvious, um, Donna Troy's many, 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 many origin stories. Uh, and then people wonder why I stop why I stopped reading superhero comics as I got older. I just couldn't stand the confusion. I, I do have to say. That while Donna Troy's many uh, many origins are myriad and sometimes confusing, my favorite is still New Fifty Two, where she's literally a statue given life by the gods. Mm -hmm. That was actually pretty cool. Um, Shades, I think you'd I think you'd get a kick out of out of some of the stuff that's going on in the Indies. I've already brought up Common America. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, obviously the Indies. <laughs> Are are you sure you don't mean common Florida? 
<laughs> Captain Florida. Thank you, Meriwether. <laughs> Let's not and say we did. But, but she suplexes an alligator for a Happy Meal. Let's not and say we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, I already did. Well, That's well, you, not me. I don't care. If... <laughs> I, well, I, um, I, I am king, I am king crimsoning that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, agreed. Um. Now I'd, I'd say I'd say if there's an, if there's any real ta if there's any real takeaway any real lesson to be to be given is that much like with a lot of things adapting ad adapting um from adapting into tabletop is not as e is not as easy of a prospect as as it as it may seem it's it can our own be FF rewarded. legend project proves that it can oh. I I knew what I was getting into when we started that. <laughs> I know, but I, it's. I, I would argue that Final Fantasy may be technically even harder than Tokusatsu. Oh, you got you got more. You've got more to work with. It's all mo more to fuck up too. Mm -hmm. But with it, when doing because when when doing the, when adapting, um. Any, anything to tabletop there are there are a lot more moving parts that you have to take in that you have to take into account if you and even more so it being just a fan of say common rider or super sentai is not necessarily in, is not necessarily enough you have to you you essentially ha you essentially have to go you essentially have to go over what go over what you're adapting with a much more fine toothed comb to see what can what you can use and what you can't use. Which again, again that I know that sounds like it's going to be a daunting affair, but if uh, but if you're if you're really committed to it, it can be just as rewarding to create it. After all, how many weeks are we into in our, our brainstorming sessions at this point, Monk? <laughs> we've been doing we've been doing those for I'd, for I'd say four months. It's been four months since we start yeah. since we started that little endeavor. Yep. And we aren't seeing any time stopping soon, so. <laughs> no. Not a, not un, not unless I not unless I end up cr un, unless I end up crashing, which I don't see that happening. But I would I would say I would say that is as good of a coda as any for this for this particular episode of of Geek Watch. Next time won't be something Togusats related, but it will involve the Graps, <laughs> as, as well as as well as part two of what I'm calling the Exodus trilogy. So keep so keep a close eye out for that and. Plus, I've got I've got a few I've got a few old friends and a few new friends com coming be coming in coming into the temple over the next week, as well as the fact that this Thursday will be the best sport covered for the men that stare at sports ball because it's time to talk about hockey. Because give remember, folks, give blood, play hockey. <laughs> and, of, and of course, this um this Friday. Will be will be the glorious return of um of the valley of the valley of the judged as we as we try v as I try very very hard to not make any Spanish Inquisition jokes and Xanatrix makes them anyways because he, because he's a dick because nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition yes yes I'm pretty sure I'll I'm pretty sure you've got a sign over your head saying maniacal laughing. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. It would that that was lo such low hanging fruit. Even I can't laugh at it. Well, you can bottle it up and call it Austrian wine. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really that toxic to you, monk? No. It's just toxic to everybody else. Got it. I'm poisoning everyone else. But with uh. but with all that said. 
we will we will see you all we will see you all again next week for another episode of the of Geek Watch. And and as as always, a sincere thanks to everyone who took the time to visit the open bar of the internet that we have here. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk and join the watch.